Perfect. Yo, what's up, guys? I am Thomas Dobasiola, whatever you want to call me. We are back on the Dope as Usual podcast. I am with my co-host, Marty O'Neill. What's up, guys? What up? How you doing? How's it going? I hope everybody's having a great day. If you are driving, please be safe. If you are at school or at work, you know, be cautious. Don't get in trouble watching our show and or listening to our show while at work. And if you're boxing up boxes at a factory, you can listen to whatever you want. And we're here to pass the time. I get a lot of people like, yo, just put the earbud in and I'm working. Perfect. So we always want. All right. Thank you guys so much. This is Marty O'Neill. I am Thomas. We are here for the Dope as Usual podcast. Right now, rare Saturday morning filming. I'm feeling great right now. I, I love a Saturday morning. I I guess. I don't know. <laughs> There's no more cartoons for me like that. Nah, man. We got the Bills today. We got the UFC oh, today. Right, we got right, Sean O'Malley right. tonight. You know, I'm feeling pretty good about today. I bought edibles yesterday. So, I mean, I'm looking forward to that. What kind? I don't know. I just saw the like, ooh, that sounds bad. And I bought them. I don't remember the brand. I mean, like, what are they? Oh, cookies? they're kind of they're, no, no. They're like uh, taffies. Oh shit! Yeah. I don't have anything to do. Uh, my back's getting better, so you've been working Chill. on your back all week. All week, intense. Two a days at the two doctors. <laughs> yeah, uh, I threw my back out. You guys know my back sucks. I threw my back out fully. The week of Will Sasso episode, I was in bed for like four four days. Five days. Um, yeah, I got an MRI a couple of days ago, and they're going to give me my results Monday. And I went on this medieval torture device, and they stretched my body. I, well, I'm going to be six foot in this. Watch. <laughs> For real, watch, watch. I'm like, damn, that's, that's your true height. Does Twitter ever suggest to you, like, worst punishments of all time? Those, no. Oof. No, they just show me fights, ignorant stuff, and people doing stupid shit. I wake up in the morning, I'm looking at Twitter first thing and shit, checking shit. First thing I'm seeing is a dude get sawed down the middle in half. Like diagram. Oh, no, like diagram. Okay. From the medieval times. Okay. That's just scary. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they put me in this bot, like this jacket, and they strapped this hook to me, and then they stretched my lower body only. Okay. But it wasn't like a. My discs, are, my discs are bulging, they said, so I had to get the pressure off mm -hmm. for my disc to go but back. But it didn't feel place. good. It didn't hurt. The way you described it to me was yeah. After nasty. I got off, uh, it definitely hurt. Like yeah. My muscles were ripping because I yeah, they weren't able to move and so on. Oh, Oof. but I'm getting better, guys. I'm getting better. I want to be able to do a backflip and land with my fist down. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like <a> power ranger. <sighs> exactly like a power uh -huh. ranger. It's, it's all I've ever wanted. Ever since the power rangers came out, I got home. I think it was second grade. I got home, threw my backpack directly on the ground because that's what you do. I put the TV on and it's like a new show coming on and it had a guy's face in a tube. Rangers. I went, like, what is this? Mm. And then Billy was all smart and like, I think he's a computer talking to Alpha and I was hooked. Power Ranger fan that day. I remember, was it Power Rangers had the, the putty, the gray guys? Of course. Okay. Because I remember painting a couple of my other toys gray. A couple of those <laughs> monsters were Brian Cranston. I don't know Get if anybody knows that. Here. Brian Cranston what? got his acting start on the Power Rangers. He's a lot of those monsters. Oh, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding at all. Brian Cranston's a like couple a of young them. Brian Cranston. Yeah, he's was... a couple of the, the monsters on Power Rangers. Wow. Right. Well, the more you know, folks. Crazy. You know what would be awesome? If I, if I forgot and remembered wrong and it wasn't Brian Cranston. <laughs> but I'm positive it's Brian Cranston. Yeah, look it up. We have the power of the internet. I'm almost 99.9% .9 sure it's him. Brian Cranston, Power Rangers. I think he... Had something to do with the newest one, right? Yeah, there he is. Yeah, yeah, he was a new guy in Power Rangers. There you go. Wow, look at him. That's why he was part of the new one. Wow. All right. Sick. Need him on the show. Oh, one day I'm only going to talk about Malcolm in the Middle. Only. We're only going to talk about Malcolm in the Middle and his appearances on Seinfeld. That's it. No, what, what have you been doing since Seinfeld? That's what I'm gonna ask him. <laughs> Malcolm Middle ended that way. What have you? You've been writing a lot. That's what I'm gonna ask him. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. But breaking. I heard a show Breaking Bad. Have you seen it? 
Can't wait to tell celebrities I don't know anything about them. Yeah, that's the new tactic in uh, season four. Gonna act like we don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> Brian Cra- Malcolm's dad, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's it. That's all. You played a dentist on Seinfeld, right? That's it. Um, let's get, uh, let's let's continue, guys. Let's continue on to what we're uh, doing today, and that's talking. So we're gonna just keep going. Here we go. Um, like I said, if you're driving, be safe. I Marty has been going hard on our social medias lately, and I've been seeing a lot of old clips. I forget about a lot of the stuff we say, and I'm watching it. I'm like, "Dang, you said <laughs> that? Oh shit!" Guys, uh, let's get into this. Okay, so do us a favor. Over the screen, boom, that is our Facebook. Dope as usual, Facebook. 70,000 motherfucking new followers. This 70, is goddamn month, two months. Let's go. Just you, started it. Just started. Oh, one thing I noticed. There's some monsters on Facebook. Oh, my God. The part of me and your children's children will be hooked on meth. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. It was a joke, and I got about... Mm-hmm. 75 people telling me that addiction is not funny. It is hilarious, depending <laughs> on how you say it. Like, there's a guy tweaking on the ground. Oh, he's addicted. That was so sad. His mom's looking for him. It's awful. Oh, that tweaker just fucking said something hilarious while tweaking on the ground. Like, yo. Uh-huh. I just con- so I just confronted this tweaker and made her feel like a fucking tweaker in yeah. the fucking backyard. And she had an intellectual <laughs> conversation with me. She was battling me with wit. And then she had an epiphany and went, oh. It is Thanksgiving. Huh? <laughs> I don't have shoes on. And also, if I cut up a nice cliffhanger that makes you want to watch the episode, that's what it's motherfucking supposed to it's be. It's supposed to do because we did the stepdad <laughs> episode. People hated that shit. People, on Facebook. <laughs> wow. There's like 700,000 views and 200 comments of people. I will never watch this piece of shit show. <laughs> Fuck this show. So many. Oh, I guess I'm saying, saying so much cuss. I'm trying to dial it back a little bit while still emphasizing my expressions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes I like to cut a nice cliffhanger to get you to go watch the People episode. Were so upset. In that case, we still didn't show the picture in the episode, but we could have. People still got upset. They were so up, so upset. Yeah, we got, but it's okay. It's Facebook. It's a different crowd. It's new people. Oh yeah, my we're getting a lot of new people. God, <laughs> people that have never come across the way we speak. <laughs> Guys, our Facebook is like the public school delinquent just got put into a private school. Yeah, it is kind of like And everybody's that. looking at him like, what the fuck? What the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> you don't have both parents? You know, addiction's not funny, right? Like, <laughs> you ever seen a crackhead dance? <laughs> I think it's funny. Um, yeah, so Facebook's insane. They, they, a lot of people don't like us, but it's funny to me, okay? Um, continue. Boom, over our screen. TikTok. TikTok's doing great. Yeah, is. TikTok's doing really good. Mari's crushing these clips. It looks awesome. Um, also, another big thing, boom, over the screen. That's our Instagram. All right? Go follow our Instagram. We finally got verified, which is insane to me. We're verified. All right? We're posting every day on Instagram. We're reaching millions of people every month on Instagram. Make sure you're following it. Behind the scenes, exclusive shit all day long. Yes. So we're just busting into this little social media plug real quick. Also, we decided to start the Dope As Usual podcast clips channel up again. We, this is what happened. We had seven, almost 60,000 subscribers. We're getting monetization, a lot of views, and then we got demonetized. And the demonetization said, hey, take down all the videos that could be deemed not community friendly, and we'll monetize you again. And then we were like, all right, YouTube, thanks. Took them all down. They went, great. Now you need all watch time again because you don't have any watch time. They're like... Motherfucker. <laughs> That's what they did to us, dude. They went, here, you can have it. And remember in Jumanji, yeah, yeah. where he handed the dice to the girl? She didn't want to play, so I give him back. And he went, yeah. and she played? That's what they did to us. Sorry. That's exactly what mm-hmm. they did to us, dude. We have five-something million watch time hours. We only need 3,000. It's grimy. But it, it is grimy. It's given us a nice, good reason to drop all these clips. from. I'm, I went back to the start. When I was like, okay, cool, this is my new priority now. I'm going to do this. I went back to this episodes one, two, three. Started chopping those up first. So if you're a new fan of the podcast, but there's so many great moments, it's fun to go back. I'm enjoying this. I just think it's funny. Mm-hmm. Private your videos. Take them all off. Oh, you don't have any videos up. How can I monetize? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck you. 
<laughs> this is mm-hmm. the biggest fuck you I've ever seen in my life. But it's working. Yeah, it's going it's great. It's working. And I got a lot of people like, damn, you guys don't need to get some new guests. Fuck this show. Like, this is Josh Wolf episode from episode one, sir. Calm down. Like, damn, you just nothing but the same guest. Like, it's a clip. It says yeah, a year ago on it. It's okay. Some people just don't read all the way. Um, that's all of our stuff that we got going. We're pumping out clips. Not to mention the motherfucking brand new dopeasusualpodcast.com. Oh. Dope as usual podcast dot com. Go check our new website that this guy just built. It's badass. It's sick. It's awesome. It has everything you possibly need. Also, we have fully opened up 420 sponsors. And this episode is brought to you by Raw Papers. Let's go. Thank you, Josh. Josh is fully, fully uh, sponsoring the show now. So that's and you know what that being said, let's let's, let's go. That's something that we feel really good about and proud of. Feels right. I just think it's awesome because Marty and I, like, from what he was doing, what I was doing, we're doing all our shit. And then it's like, Thank you, sir. wait, you guys get paid to get high on the show? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do. Which is unbelievable to me. Uncle John be losing his mind. Ready? Let's get into this, guys. Hey, remember when we had Will Sasso on the fucking podcast, by the way? And then he got high last week. Remember when Will Sasso smoked on a podcast for the first time ever last week? <laughs> ever? Ever in life? I was shocked. I was like, got butterflies when I saw that shit. He's like, you know what? I'm chilling. I'll take a toot. <laughs> yeah. like, you're Canadian. I love him. What a nice man. Guys, that was so crazy having Will on here. I, I've been listening to him since probably 10 years. It's it. so many countless laughs. It was so cool to have him on here and just. It got shadow banned a little, but every comment is, I think this might be my favorite episode. It was just. It was, was I was great. hoping, and as it should be, because like if people aren't familiar with him, if they if they weren't tuned into all the destruction he did on that whole wave of podcasting before, he's a he's monster. That's why we titled the funniest human alive. Because I mean, pound for pound, he's fucking up there. A lot of people, a lot of people in that contender. Uh, I don't think a lot of them can do what he did. Funny man, like unbelievable. Guys, let's step up the motherfucking energy out here. Got a story to tell. Many stories, but I was gonna do a story time on this topic. I'm like, you know, let me just let me just bring it over here. All right, here we go. A little story time coming in. We'll skip around. As you guys know, my entire family in Merced, the Mexican side, they're all truck drivers. You guys know that. I th- I don't know if I mentioned it, but the first time I ever drove the truck by myself, I've been driving my whole life. Diesels. Diesels are harder to drive. You have to downshift. There's eight gears. It's a little different, right? Eight and up. If you have the switch, you can go all the way up more. Um, my dad's not responsible. My dad is was a child when he had me. So here's a little four or five-year-old me. My dad's 23, right? Maybe 24. And my dad's been working since he's 13, driving trucks, 14. So what happens? I just sit on my dad's lap all the time and I steer the I steer the the steering wheel. I'm a child. I want to pull the fucking horn. I want to do all that shit. You know when you're a kid and the truck driver goes by and you go and they do it? Imagine being able to do it for another kid. And I see kids do it, I go, yeah, and I pull it thinking I'm the man. Cause they're looking at me like, that's a kid in there. Um so what happened was my dad, like, always sit on his lap, always sit on his lap. I think I was six years old. I drove the truck by myself on dirt roads, you know, where there's not traffic, not on a main freeway in California. So my dad's like, you know what? There's still drugs in my brain. This is a good idea. Hey, son, you're five, maybe six. Drive the diesel alone. So my dad, we're going down 99, going toward LA, probably close to Bakersfield. There's other humans on the road, all right? Other people, it's the day. My dad says, Tom, I think you can do it by yourself. And I went, really? And my dad slipped off, stood in the middle, held the steering wheel, and then I got in the driver's seat. Then he sat like, 
ass on the passenger seat, but looking toward me in case something happened, he can like reach over. Only for the first couple of minutes, like he, he let me do it. So here we go. I'm driving. I got my foot on the gas. He has the 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 the, the speed set, but I have my foot on the gas. Like, all right, cool. I got this. And I'm just, ooh, and he's like, stay in the lines, stay in the lines. What's that sign say? And I read it. That's how I learned to read. I tell you that. My dad would make me read every single sign that we saw on the road. That's how I learned. I I, I was reading everything out like three. My dad, the speed limit says there. Speed limit says that, and I used to be a stickler, like slow down. So you're just fucking sitting there, and he springs this on you, basically. I always drive on his lap, but this time he's like, "You can do it by yourself." And I was like, "Oh god. my god!" So I'm driving. I have my foot on the gas, and then he he does, we're not shifting. We're just traveling, going like 50, 55. I have my hand on the shifter. I'm like, "Oh my god!" Like I'm doing this. I have my hand, a little you know, a little me. My dad's. Couldn't be further than you, mm-hmm. right? There was no phones you could just be spaced out on. He's watching the road with me. And I'm driving, and I'm driving, and I remember I hit a little button, the little, and I correct myself. And I'm driving, and I remember I look down, and there's like older dudes in a truck <sighs> looking at me, and I look at him, and I'm driving, and my dad looks, looks over, and, and the guy just drives off, like speeds past. I think, he, I mean, I would have been like, is that a child driving a diesel? <laughs> But then I didn't think he saw my dad. I was like, oh, still. <laughs> yeah, so I'm driving and I'm thinking, this is the one time. I've only had a few times in my, in my life where I thought this. And I was like, I could kill everybody on the road right now. This is very scary. Like, if I just do this because I want to, all you are dead. I remember my dad gave me a gun. I was like nine and he let me shoot. And I had it in my hand like, if I want to, I could shoot all of you. This is not what I want around me. This is scary. But that was the first time I ever thought like, I can kill you guys. I don't like this feeling. Anyway, we're driving. He let me drive for like 15 minutes and then that was it. Too much responsibility for a child. It was too much. It was it was on my brain. Like, I, I really like, oh, well, I could just kill you? I don't want to do that. Agreed. I don't want yeah. that around. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I, I don't want that You're not near. supposed to be having to make that decision at that age. No. But I was driving since so I was like five years old. They let me start taking the truck by you myself. You know, Emmy's five, right? Yeah. How, how insane that is. I know. But I was way different than Emmy. Emmy's a very childlike yeah. child. I was not. Um, I was like seven, maybe nine, when they started letting me drive the truck by myself, but on the property. You know what I mean? Like, it's only yeah. 90 yards. I'm going slow mm. down the hill. Yeah, like. Reversing. When- just in the rocks doing circles. April stepdad lets Cam drive the tractor and shit. Kind of like that. Yeah, there you go. When I got to like 11 or 12 is when I was like, they're all at work. I'm going to take the truck down the road. And I would take the truck to one down the road. There's one right turn off Belcher. And I'd flip around and come back. Does it got a big ass? No, no, pickups. Oh, I was taking okay. the pickups. I wouldn't take the diesels. Diesels <laughs> are just too hard. Yeah. They're just too hard to work with. You can't go fast. There's a lot of pickup. You know what I mean? It's like boring. So, yeah, I was driving since I was a kid. And, um, yeah, so this brings me to another another thing. All my family's are truck drivers, right? Everyone. Even my mom was a truck driver. And my Uncle Jaime's wife was a truck driver. My Uncle Jaime, let's just talk. Let's do this. My Uncle Jaime married this lady, this white lady. She was very cool to me. Very awful to my cousins, right? Didn't know that until I was a little older. Um, I remember this, and I was Twenty ex- Second Street. Remember when I said I saw my stepdad, and he was showing a bunch of tweakers how to fix a car mm-hmm. across the street, my uncle's apartments. I said, mm-hmm. "These are the apartments." I'm in the apartments with my dad, my sister, my cousin, and we're watching the news. And on the news was my aunt Tanya. The one that, it's her house I'm in. Like, you're on the news? Somebody ran her off the road. She was driving a diesel. A young white girl. Like, this is 1994. Young white chick with, like, curly hair. Somebody ran her off the road in her diesel. Other diesel, like, hit and ran her off the road. Like, on purpose? Yeah. You know what? She's wild. She might be lying. But this is what happened. Her truck started flipping. And I remember she was on the, on the, 
news for like surviving this crash or whatever, but she like snapped her leg in hella places and shit. And I remember thinking, so you can get really hurt driving. And that's when like the consequences of driving kind of hit my life. Mm -hmm. And then I remember somebody drove my grandma Grace off the road. Jesus Christ. Yeah. When I was like 12, somebody ran my grandma off the road into a canal. Like on some road rage? Yeah, but he was in a diesel also. I don't know. I think what it is, a lot of tweakers are up late. I mean, a lot of tweakers. A lot of truck drivers are up late and they start tweaking, at least in the valley. And maybe they went nuts and like, oh, this fool trying to rob me or start tripping. I mean, dude, come on. Mm -hmm. And then I remember I was with my dad and my sister. I was probably about 10. And we were trying, we're on the 99 coming to Merced. And a diesel just does this. Tries to run us off the road. As we're coming up on just... And my dad had to break. And then every time we try to do it, he would do it again. And every time we got close, he would try to run us off the road. And then we got next to him, and he was just completely normal. The fuck? Tweaking. <laughs> it had to have been, dude. Um, but truck driver life is weird. I think we talked about the CB radio. We'd mess with everybody on the CB radios a lot. Um, what our thing was is we would tell stupid jokes, and other truckers are adults. They have jokes. So me and Shereen, just, it was nonstop entertainment. Like, I don't know how this shit works, but if the guy's being a dick and he's right next to you, can you like radio at him? Or does he a hundred percent. My dad has yelled at fools on CBs. Hell of shit. Mm -hmm. But you got to be on the same channel. It's different. It's different. A lot of banging goes down on those CBs. A lot of drugs go down on those CB radios. Oh, shit. Okay. A lot of code words. Mm -hmm. I'm over here at the Flying J. Say some shit like, oh, you... Got someone that's selling Chris. That, okay, gotcha. Hooks that flying jet. Got you. Damn. It's like a community of fools. Like, yeah, uh, on the road for three weeks. Anybody got any ice? Like, oh, yeah. They're not really, but like, that's like code word. Ice CB road radio. truckers. Yeah, yeah, ice road truckers is a whole different statement when it's hot. You know? <laughs> the fucking desert. <laughs> um. So yeah, that happened. All that crazy shit happened. CB radios. Uh, my grandma got run off the fucking road. My mom's gotten into a bunch of crazy things. Truck driving is very odd. Truck driving is weird. Um, I hate it. It's the most boring thing you could do. I feel like you'd have to be on something to be able to do that past once or twice. You know what I've noticed? A lot of black, young black dudes, young Arab dudes. Yeah. Getting into trucking. Mm -hmm. A lot. Yeah. Good. They're smart. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't just be fools that figured it out. Well, that's what Jamal did when he got out, and then he oh. ended up getting his own truck and shit. So he's probably making over 120 bands a year. I, a lot of you people don't understand that trucking is a huge, huge industry. You work for yourself. You're responsible, and you can make over 100 bands at least a year. My dad makes at least that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my whole life, though. My dad's always been working his ass off. My dad works, dude. Um, and I won't say who, but I have a family member. My dad just called me like two days ago. He's like, man, I'm done with trucking. He told me again. But I have a family member, won't say who. Been tweaking real hard lately. It's really weird to see. Been tweaking hard. And one of my family members like let him work for one of the companies. Full stole the truck and trailer. Mm. Stole the whole thing. Just left. So what do you do? They fucking... After they waited like four days and they're like, we don't want to call the cops because then that's like a felt like he's going to get in trouble. Yeah. They had to call the cops like four days later and right when they did, they found his ass. They're like, the truck is dead. That has no gas and he was in the trailer just tweaking. <sighs> Bro, it's so weird because this... Uh, I won't put him on blast but he's one of my family members and I grew up like... He's older than me, so like he was cool. It's weird seeing this shit. Is he dude. like relapsing or he's a yeah. new tweaker? Relapsing. That's very us. odd. It's weird seeing that shit. Cause I've been around tweakers my whole life, but seeing like, wow, dude, I thought you had your shit together. Yeah, like if somebody was like a responsible adult while you were a kid and then you grow up and you look very at him and see him like that. Responsible. Multiple States, <laughs> man, what what happens to make a adult start smoking? Oh man, I don't know. That's not fun. Drugs aren't fun like that. 
Yeah, it doesn't look like you're like chilling, having a good time on that shit. I don't ever want to be sweaty. Frantic, just like in my manic. car and frantic. Yeah, like that's not. <laughs> I'm good, dude. <laughs> I'm good. Um. So yeah, damn, dude. You know, I was thinking the other day. I have a lot of stories, and a lot of the stories, I'm like, I wonder if I think should I not hold that story? Then again, it's like it couldn't be more anonymous. Or say people's names. <laughs> They're my family <laughs> But who I mean Who cares Don't do stupid shit It's right there In the title of the show Bottom of the website Website looks so nice By the way Um. So yeah That's what's been going on Stole that shit Now he's in jail Got it We got it all back But <coughs> Definitely some crazy shit He's in prison Over a five day Bender basically you know what's crazy is we talked about my stepdad and how we didn't show the picture. And that's my mom just texted me about him. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, not like he hit her up, but some something adjacent. You couldn't show his picture just for fucking obvious public safety reasons. I am not. Privacy. Like, I'd rather stop the show. Yeah, we're not. That's just. No. Because what happens when something's going down? I'm like, oh, my God, is this because I did that? All of this because of that? I wish I never did a podcast. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, five years later, like, yo, remember we used to do the show? Yeah, that was fun, but I didn't get killed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a yeah. stretch to even really talk about the shit. So everybody just, you guys respect that. Yeah, I can't, I can't do it. So what, life or dead? What, what it's life or dead? Can oh, you no. talk about the update? Oh, the update. Uh, my stepdad used to have a best friend. Okay. Dumbass. Remember I told you I slammed a, grown, a full grown man into an oven? This best friend. Uh, we were at his house. I'm like... 10 but i'm like this same thing as a 10 year old just like hey and full pants to me <laughs> a 10 year old pants that's insane me. pants in it how old was he 30 <sighs> pants Getting to pants me. to make you want to kill a motherfucker i never as i was pulling him up i was like hmm I'm gonna get you right now. You yeah, don't yeah, get it yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. You don't understand what's about to happen, bro. Like you can't fully hit me. My stepdad will kill you. Where so were I'm you guys? In his house with my stepdad and my stepmom and and I mean my stepmom, my mom, my stepdad, my stepdad's best friend, his wife. There are three friends. There are other tweak homies, like two other homies, a bunch of loser fools drinking beers, a bunch of fools. Was he trying to be goofy or? Was yeah, he, being he was an trying asshole? to be funny because he always fucked with me. Uh huh. Stupid ass, full pants to me, boxers, everything, everything. I was so mad. I picked him up. I looked at him, and I rushed him like Christmas story. Nice. Yeah, I rushed him. I picked him up by his hips, and I threw him straight into the oven. Bah! And he was laughing, going, "Oh my god!" And he was looking at everybody like, Do you, "What?" <laughs> but he's pointing at me, and I'm looking at him, and I'm, I'm like gonna hit him and my mom is grabbing me and i was just like who, who what who do you think you are like some sh like i was 20 and i was looking at him like he goes oh my god and then my stepdad oh me oh dang you're so strong <laughs> I was like shut up hit your home i was like do something I, oh man anyway that guy texted my mom today but she texted me about OG it. when you said that <laughs> i know but that's what my stepdad used to call me only he would oh, never fuck. call me Thomas or anything. It was only that. Hold on. Ned Flanders stepped out called yeah, you Miho? Only. Get the fuck out yeah, of here. Yeah, only. He would never call me anything else. <laughs> Damn. It was pretty wild. But uh, I guess my stepdad <coughs> stole his best friend's wife and married her <coughs> and robbed him. Oh, shit. Wait. <coughs> like My stepdad's best friend hit up my mom and was like, hey. <coughs> Here's the rundown. <coughs> I've seen you in 19 years, but let me drop some drama on you. Facebook's a wild place. There's a lot of those guys going, addiction is not a joke. That's, 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 who, it's, that's who's telling me this. And uh, it's like, yeah, he stole my baby's mom, married her, moved into my house, and then robbed me. Wow, all of these things? Holy shit. Like, first off, wait, you're going to leave me for him? Damn. Fuck. All right, let me at least go home. My key doesn't work. 
You guys are in there. Oh, <laughs> going back to his car. I'm robbed. <laughs> Damn, dude. What else is going to happen to you? When you say you robbed them, what do you mean? Probably went to his house and stole everything and went, what are you going to do about it? And walked out. That's exactly what happened. My, my stepdad's best friend knows. Knows. That's the thing when you're friends with a fucking psycho. Things go wrong. Psycho. But they've been friends since I was 10. Oh. And before. You did that to him? There's, my, mm. He doesn't play by rules like that? Something happened. My stepdad's not a scandalous person. Something happened where he felt played and goes, everything you have is now mine. Oof. <laughs> I'm going to take your life now. That's exactly what happened. Like That beard, <laughs> shave it. I'm going to grow a beard. I grow beards, not you. I swear to God, he's that. <laughs> yeah. That's a movie. Yeah. Definitely is that guy. Now that I'm older, I get it. That's it. I'm taking your life. <laughs> you gonna kill me? No, no, no. Like, take your shoes off. <laughs> Literally, I'm up. You sleeping in your bed? I'm everything. Oh, that's for everything. sure. Everything. <laughs> Yo, that's evil. And then you turn back around and fucking. I want to know how we robbed him afterwards. Jesus Christ! My mom even said. How is he going to steal someone's wife? How does this happen? What kind of fight is this? And I'm like, Mom, he just fights better. That's it. <laughs> She's a tweaker, bitch. Wow. She's going to go, well, I can have this white guy with no teeth or this white guy with no teeth. This one could fight good. So I guess that's it. He lives here now. That's all it was on some caveman. Like, <laughs> oh, and then runs off. Like, that's exactly what happened. Except they're roasting fucking pookies, not meats. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, we could demolish. I get it. Totally get it. <laughs> yeah, but I get it now. Yeah. Okay. Because you think about it, other podcasts, yeah, they're talking about stuff and shit. No one's comparing caveman and pookie pipes and, yeah, and yeah. meth heads. So I get it. <laughs> I'm trying not to cuss no, this as much. This is like basic human form that we're talking about. He just like, it's like when Frank Gallagher moved into, the, remember? 100%. Kind of like that. Dude, come on. <laughs> Dead on. The thing is that the finds, what I think is funny is he was, she, she showed me the text. Like, if he ever shows his face around here again, he doesn't have an accent. I just fucking added it on there okay. for meth right. purposes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you better not show his face. Like, what are you going to do? That's like me smacking you, peeing on you, and leaving. Goes <laughs> ten more seconds of that shit, and it would have been over for Thomas. But shut up, shut up, Marty. Oh, the friend was saying that about. Yeah, he oh, texts my God. mom if I ever see him again, and oh, shows his face shit. around these parts. <laughs> it's for shit. It's fucking eight feet wide. You're gonna see him today. Tweakers, you know what's crazy? Right now, drop it in the comments. You can go across your whole town, see people at the store. Oh, a mom drinking Starbucks on her phone. Oh, that girl's got big ass glasses in 2008. Oh, look at some kids at the mall. Where are the tweakers? They're functioning somewhere. There's a place in every town where you open a nice door. I'm like, wow, someone's son took over this house. <laughs> like that old man just let it go. Oh, and this yeah. tweaker son is running it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> tweakers do shit in the day. It's kind of crazy to think about, right? Uh -huh. Even though you have a nice, you're a nice town, yeah. there's twacks there. Where are uh -huh. they? Under bridges? Yeah, they're in the woods. And in the woods, in alleys, but there's not really alleys out here. Mm -hmm. I think about that all the time. Like, I remember there was times where I would be on drugs, like doing coke, and I think, I wonder what someone so is doing right now. And then I think about all the times where I'm doing something fun and going, there's people right now snorting chris for the first time or like there's somebody right now going well i'm homeless now shit mm -hmm. that's weird yeah especially around here i don't know i think about it all the time whoa like what am i doing right now like what's my home joe doing mm. outside somewhere doing something weird yeah like these little things that i'm worried about in my life i'm over here just chilling doing this but meanwhile just as I'm doing this. And it's not even that good. Reverse. I'm 15. Me and Joe are just chilling together. Yeah. Like, don't worry, in like 15 years. Oh, oh drastically different. It's weird. I, I always think of like the reverse. Mm -hmm. 
I remember the yeah. day I signed my homie Anthony's yearbook. I'm like, for your future kids, man. Blah, 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 blah. Now I'm like meeting his kids and seeing him all the time. It's always so weird. Yeah. I always think of butterfly effect shit and go, yeah. what happened? What did I think we of do? that movie all the time. What can we go back? Like, like, help. Because shit, this sucks. Oh, like the last Rant City. I said, I, I drove into Merced. Right when I got there, I went, wow, I haven't seen him in a long time. I remember I saw a tweaker frantically riding a bike. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys remember I said that. This is two weeks ago. Three weeks ago I said that. A week and a half ago, so basically a week after I said that, Rosie tells me that that fool died. The person I'm talking about died. Crazy. We're not old yet. Yeah. That fool's dead. He's in. All right. Remember in story time where I talk about <clears throat> I accidentally smoked meth and I did the reenactment. Well, remember the original story where I said I went outside and this fool Lamont was smoking cigarettes and he flicked it in the air. That's who passed away. Fool Lamont. Damn. Yeah. Fool from that story time. He probably got hooked that story time. That cabbie. He was probably willingly smoking those. That's sad, man. It's sad because I remember he was just like a slightly older. And he could buy cigarettes for us, and he was cool. What about it would have made you want to go back and do it again? Anything? I mean, nothing. It sounded complete, totally horrible. What it is, I think, what saved my life, because I'd probably be a drug addict, is movies. I always see examples of people messing up and going, "Well, don't do something like that." Remember when Scarface was like, "No kids," I'm like, "Yo, you could have caught him earlier." And now look what happened to you—you you shot the fool in the head. Now you're dead. And I always think of like Goodfellas, like, yo, don't go down that alley. Mm -hmm. Those guys are moving boxes. He was going to get you killed. Go back to Henry. Like, I, I talk about it all the time. I always think, like, nah. If this, and that's why I say, if this is a movie, am I the bad guy? No, then I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. Truly, Absolutely. if I'm not the bad guy, then do I care? No, I'm the right. Mm -hmm. This is a movie, and you're like, ooh, you could be the dick. Yeah. Then you should probably rethink. It's a really good way of thinking about it. Always. In a relationship. If this movie happened and you guys broke up in a relationship, who would the audience be rooting for? All right, then. Yeah. Is she a bitch or he a dick? Title of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So. Strawberry lemonade, by the way. I smelled it. I was trying to. I was trying to pinpoint. I, str I smelled it. The White Widow. I love that one. The infamous White Widow. Hold on. Is she a bitch or he a dick? Leads me in perfectly <laughs> into my next topic. And I only wanted to talk about this because it's kind of like a soap opera. So when I was in Portland, I told you my uncle. He married my aunt, my aunt Tanya, that got her leg broken. Okay. Bad person. Now she's getting a lot better, but um, there's very few people I'm like, oh, you're a bad person. I don't know if I can associate with you. Anyway, my uncle is not a good husband, right? I mean, I'm, just, I'm not sitting here like, damn, you put family business on blast. Everybody knows my uncle's not a very good guy when he was younger. He's a cheating my aunt a lot, obviously. You know, he's not a very great, great, great husband. And um, I didn't see it happen. I just heard every all the time they were always fighting and things would happen. I, you know, he, more than once, right? So I remember, <laughs> I remember one time it was a job. We get off a job. I think I told you this story. I get off a job, and we go to Best Buy. My uncle wants to go to Best Buy to buy something. And I'm like, okay. I'm so polite. I'm so like, this is not my house. I don't know the like. I'm not gonna just like get water or something you know what i mean like it's not I, i'm that person I'm like hey not john's always like stop knocking on my door and walk in and go bro i'm never gonna yeah. just walk in your house like, ever of course it's not gonna happen <laughs> so answer the door that's the thing because he takes forever to answer the door so i'm like well, just, just fucking open the door i called you i said i was pulling up mm -hmm. so anyway the reason i say that is because my uncle, I get in his truck. I'm not going to touch. It's his shit. I'm not going to touch his stuff. But he's like, I'm going to go to Best Buy. And he was listening to some music I didn't want to listen to. Okay. He left the keys in the car. So the reason I'm only saying this because I could see off the rear view or the side mirror to the front door. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch the front door. So when I see him coming, I can change the music back and not be like, yeah, you just touch my radio. Wow. Okay. He's not yeah. going to be like that. But I, 
I'm, yeah. It's my first time working with my uncle. I'm with him. Like, he's paying me. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to touch his shit. So I keep looking in the side mirror. But the reason I'm saying this is because I keep looking in the side mirror. Because I want to make sure he's not coming back. I'm like, damn, what are you bumping? Why are you changing my radio for? It? That's the like the anxiety I had. Like, oh, man, I'm just trying to do my work and sit here. Pretend I'm not here. Kind of kid, right? Yeah. But I'm looking in the side mirror. I'm like, hey, you can go into Best Buy. So me looking in the side mirror, trying to be a vig- vigilant on not being rude, I see this motherfucker not go to Best Buy. Okay. And he gets into a bat into a truck. Oh shit. I'm looking, I'm like, <laughs> huh? He gets into a truck. I'm like, okay. But like four rows down. We're like five rows. I'm, I'm looking this way because I'm looking at the side mirror. And I'm watching it. I'm like, he got into a truck. Ah, I don't care. I thought nothing of it. I was like, maybe I thought it's all wrong. I'm just looking. And I look at the time like, it's been 40 minutes. What's going on here? And then like 45, 55, almost an hour. I see him walking. I'm like, oh, I changed the radio back. I'm like, bro, we're looking for an hour. And I almost missed it. He's walking back up to the moving truck. And I change it. And I'm sitting there and he gets in. He looks at me. I'm like, what's up? Sorry about that. It took forever. I'm like, oh, that's cool. In my head, I'm like, where's your shit at? What'd you go to Best Buy for? In my head, he goes, you saw that, right? I go, what? He goes, don't play dumb. You saw that. I go, I just been sitting here. He goes, all right. Turns the truck on, and we left. I didn't realize he was meeting up with some bitch to cheat on my aunt with. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't realize, like, oh, is that why you said that? Like, oh, you caught me. But f- anyway, the reason I bring that up mm-hmm. is because my uncle's cool. He's just, you know, he's that. He's one of those guys. One of those guys. What's a sketchy move to do with a kid? <sighs> I think he was more like one of these. Uh, I saw that, right? Oh, it was like that. Oh, Jesus Christ. It was kind of what my uncle's like. Yeah, but yeah. He, he's cool. He's just... One of those dudes, man. Yeah, he's yeah, one of those yeah. guys. I remember when I was a kid, he's like, if you don't have sex with 100 girls by the time you're out of high school, what are you doing? Not having kids. Bro. <laughs> I remember he said that to me, and I went, there's only like five girls that I would like want to date at school. <laughs> what are you doing? Who, who are you meeting? <laughs> this is this a small town. <laughs> Some of those have to be a cousin. Like... Just by averages. Just by averages, and it was the 80s and 90s. Like, uh, dude, there was a lot less people back then. <laughs> anyway, I heard him say that when I was a kid. I went, oh, God, that's disgusting. I was in like seventh grade when I heard it. Anyway, fast forward. You seen that, huh? I was like, damn. And I, I don't mean to like, I don't hope he doesn't get upset that I'm telling the story. I'm going to fucking tell it. Just don't watch then. Mm-hmm. But I hope you don't get upset at me telling the story. My family members watch. But yeah, look what he's saying about. I ain't saying nothing that nobody already knows. Uh-huh. It's not like I'm telling secrets. Um, but I, I will. I'm, I'm saying this story because it has. I'm only talking about things that have good endings. Not good for everyone. But like. All right. Good movie. Good yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, my Aunt Tanya. You know, she has like five kids. My my uncle, my cousin Brina that just graduated high school, my sister, my sister Shireen, my mm-hmm. sister Grace, and my cousin Brina all went to Miami to hang out with my uncle for the graduation. Like week after, my sister took them. Mm-hmm. My uh, my cousin Brina was born, and then my aunt was pregnant two weeks later. <laughs> Okay. That's oh, tough. yeah. That's, that's, that's fast. Yeah. That was fast. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> so the reason I'm saying this is she had kid after kid after kid after kid after kid after oh. kid. So she used to be like very like in shape lady, and now yeah. she's not. She's a very she's like a bigger lady. So mm-hmm. I think she was feeling like a little like I don't feel like myself, mm-hmm. and I know this fool's messing around on me. But my homie was. Ballins. We had the moving, the moving company that was like ninth in America. All that crazy stuff. The Oregon moving stories, and all the crazy houses. Like this is the time. Like he was balling. So I think they were just busy running, running businesses and like 
what is this fool doing? Oh, shit, I have eight kids. Uh, back to this. You know what I mean? It was one of those classic stories of like just being too busy and not paying attention, right? So the reason I bring this up is there was this dude. I won't say his name. Let's call him, let's call him W. Let's call him W. And I don't know if they really want me to say everything like that. That's crazy. This guy named W. And he was like a hood. No, not a hood dude. He, he was like a, I want to be hood. But I'm also a nerd. He's like one of those black dudes that's like, oh, yeah, my cousins are down, so I'm down. But he really wasn't yeah, down. Okay. One of those guys that like stood in the back of the fight. Yo, we messed them up, man. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know a lot of them. Okay, you know a lot of them. So it's like, yeah, you weren't even fighting. Why are you? <laughs> like, this is, if this is Instagram, they'd definitely be flexing a gun that has never been shot. I could bring up some pictures right now. Okay. So <laughs> this was one of these guys, and he was one of my uncle's workers. So he worked for my uncle as a mover. I worked for my uncle as a mover, so I worked with this man. Very lazy man. Very lazy man. You know those Walmart work workers that's like kind of out of shape, dude, on his phone while you're trying to ask a question? One of those workers like, mm -hmm. yo, you are making us look stupid. Get off your phone. Back when there was just text, there wasn't even like Instagram. You're t nining right now. It was bad, dude. And it got to the point where I'm like, bro, you are making, you look lazy. All these Mexican dudes are lifting everything. This doesn't look good. If a racist man walks by right now, he's gonna go, I, I told you. Like, no, don't be making us look like stereotypes out here, fool. Like, get off your phone all the time. We'd always oh, like, yo, you gotta pick your, you gotta pick up your pants. We're on the job, man. We're walking through someone's home. We had a five-star rating, ninth in America. Mm -hmm. You can't be sagging, <laughs> fool. My cousin sags, but not at work. We can't. We just can't. You can't. Nice houses. Homeowners don't in. like that shit. Homeowners don't like to see that shit. We have hell of fucking hood ass fools that worked for us, but like everyone was like, we're at work because you get tipped after too. Don't be looking like a hood ass dummy on your phone while you're carrying boxes in. Full loud conversation as he's carrying boxes in, and it wouldn't drive me insane. If you're ignorant on top of it, because I used to be in the office in my fucking Dickies and 3XYTs and Tim's and shit. Like I'm stupid me as fuck with but I was customer still service nice, voice. Yeah. yeah. But you got to put on a little hat. Yeah. Bro. You have to. But that was the one thing me and him always get into. But hey, how about I take the box down and you walk it upstairs? I'm doing this for two hours. I'm, I've been taken up and you've been on a phone putting boxes at the edge of a truck. He was just like always the dude trying his best to not work. Mm -hmm. Always this motherfucker. Anyway, we got into it a lot. And the reason I bring up all those flaws is because everyone talks about him to his face. But like, hurry up, man. Like everyone talks shit. Everyone, my Uncle Jaime and him are homies though. Like he's just my Uncle Jaime's friend. So he never fired him, mm -hmm. never like reprimanded him, nothing. Never, nothing ever happened to this guy. Never got in trouble, nothing. But it was my uncle's like homie. And the one thing is he's like, remember I say he's kind of like a nerd kind of dude. So he's kind of like one of those gamer dudes that kind of like, hey fool, you need to take a shower. Mm -hmm. Hey man, you need to take a shower. You fucking stink. You fucking stink. Yeah. But he was mad shit, like he was always fun, trying to be funny. But also like, fool, shut up. You ain't fucking boxer shooting nobody. Shut up. I'm I'm 14. Who are you trying to impress? It's just me and you. Like, it's just me and you on this job. And you're over here talking about shit you did. You're 25 years old. You're Calm giving down. me fucking PTSD with this shit. Yeah, but you're like, I'm a child. I'm like, bro, who are you trying to impress? But the thing is, he would be talking oh, shit about my Uncle Jaime. Oh, okay. And then when my Uncle Jaime, and, and when he wasn't, when W wasn't there, he'd be talking shit about him. So they're like a friendship, but also like a battle between them two. Yeah. So I was in the middle like, yeah, yeah, he's lazy. I know he's lazy. I work with him. Get him in trouble. Stop complaining. Tell him. And then he'd be like, your uncle over there being greedy. Like, it's his business. Yeah, you're going to get a minimum wage. Like, or not. Yeah, you're just going to get your wage. You think you're going to get part of the job? Make your own company, stupid. Mm -hmm. yeah. Man, McDonald's, you need to cut me in on this burger sales. I'm like. You just work yeah. here. What's wrong with you? He would always be like, big ass house and shit. Can't even kick us down. Like, kick you down. He's paying you. 
What's wrong with you? <laughs> so it was always me in the middle just hearing that. Like, yeah, he's lazy. Yeah, he's greedy. Oh, but only me in my head going, he's not greedy. He's just doing his business. And you're lazy as yeah. shit. I've told you to your face 82 mm -hmm. times. Please get off your phone. The reason I'm saying this is he's kind of stinky, kind of a loser, doesn't work hard, kind of lame, thinks he's tough. And then my uncle and aunt separate. Right? Who moves right into my uncle's house? W. Jesus Christ. Got with my aunt. So grimy. Could you imagine? Bro, he was in my uncle's house. Living there. <laughs> <laughs> quit. Completely quit. So as my aunt's doing all the calls and work. Wait, they still work there? No, he quit my uncle's spot. Moved into his home because my uncle didn't live there at the time. Because he moved out because they separated. Uh -huh. W moves right in and starts banging my aunt. And they're together now. Okay. Gets divorced. She keeps the business. He now owns my uncle's business. Oh. He owns the whole thing, essentially, because my aunt's one of those dumb bitches that's like, yeah, you're better with money. You can make it. You do it. She's like one of those bitches that would definitely like, if a pimp got close to you, you better hold on tight because you're leaving with him. You're dumb. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like, oh, give me that 20. I'll turn it into 70. Here. <laughs> it didn't work. Can you give me another 20? Here. Every day. So he... He's running my uncle's business now. He's like, I so chart, like he, full ownership now, bitch. <laughs> what was it? I want to take your life. Yeah. What were we talking about? Yeah, he took his essence. Took his, it all. From fucking Ned Flanders. Yes, yes. <laughs> I want to take your whole life. Your life is mine now. Wow. Two guys in the same fucking episode doing this shit is crazy. He went in and started dating her. Who are these bitches that are just going for the best friends as soon Bro. as they fucking split up? He was working... For the moving company up until aunt, moving in. While my uncle was on jobs, I think he was having an affair with my aunt. Of course. I mean, he had to be. But he was like calling off work when he should have been working with my uncle. He was like, no, I'm going to call off work today. I'm going to go bang your wife <laughs> while you're at work. Shorthanded. <laughs> the most diabolical shit I've ever Ooh. heard. Insane. Insane. But also the reason I led with, you know. Both of you guys aren't very good in this marriage. You know, it's not all her fault. She just did what you did. Way more devious. But the act was the same to cheating and having an affair. Just did like you did. Did he fall in? Like, was, did he oh, plot? Oh, oh, I'm not he, done. I'm not okay. done. Okay. Okay. I'm not done. All right. Rest in peace, Jerry Springer. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this is exactly Jerry Springer, but real life. And I watched it unfold like... <laughs> oh my god that stinky ass fool anyway divorce my aunt keeps the company ninth in america keeps the company with this man like on a technicality type shit How well when they were happen? splitting everything he's like well you keep that then i'll keep this you oh. keep that i'll keep this wow bro the man went from complaining about being they oh he ain't share nothing to it's mine. The Yelp ever <laughs> is mine. He took the business essentially with my aunt. Rode off into the fucking sunset to the bank. Crashed it the into the ground oh, in three months. No, of course he did. All reviews went to shit so bad that she sold the trucks and stopped doing everything. Wow. Jesus fucking Christ. Why would she even want that? It's making so much money. Yeah, I want the business. It's making money because all of his family members are running it. We no longer run it. Your fucking dumb hood ass boyfriend's running it with his homies going, nice TV. Yeah, on the phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you want the TV? No, no, we don't. No, you, you move. He was one of those dudes. It's like, bro, why are you here? Mm -hmm. Uncle, Uncle why, why do you keep him here? He is dumb. You know what I mean? Not me, just. Dumb and ignorant. It's fucking your wife. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But that's how that story played out, man. Ooh. Oh, are evil and devious, man. Crazy how shit turns like that. I wonder if he just fell into that or if he really. No, no, like no. He just fell into it. He was hanging out at our at the house all the time. 
Oh. After work, we'd all be sitting there. He'd hang out with the kids. I'd be chilling with him. He was still fun. He like, <coughs> no, he'd be sitting there while everybody's adding up the numbers, get, uh, taking the stuff out the truck. Everybody's getting back into their trucks, getting paid. He'd be like, "What's up? What's up? What's up?" He was a younger dude. Uh huh. He'd be like, "What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up?" All the kids. My cousin Adrian was my age, so we'd be like, "What's up, fool? W? What's up? What's going on?" But in our heads, we're like, I wish you would work better because you're cool. Mm -hmm. I just wish you would work harder because you make me hate you. I'm doing your work. You know what I mean? Like, I ha if you don't do it, I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Did you see the episode of Black Mirror where uh, they two dudes are up on space and they have <laughs> like body doubles down on Earth? There's two dudes working on a spaceship up in space, but they have body doubles on Earth that they can like Avatar style. They lay down in a tube, and that now is so scary. They're up there on Earth, but then something happens. Uh, and the one dude can't come back down to his body, so like his family gets killed. So the dude's like, "You can use my body. You can go like, if you you want to you want to paint, you're a painter. You can go paint at my house." So the dude, you know, teleports uh, down to his house and ends up trying to take his wife and his life, <laughs> just like this shit. <laughs> Black Mirror, yeah. moving services. <laughs> <laughs> Black Bear moving services. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Fuck. Oh, and then um, she lost the house, and then they broke up. He essentially sold off all of her, all of her stuff. Damn. So he just had a. This is like. Cool oh, he story. probably still has a couple dollars from it. Yeah. Unless they're all tweaked and out. And there's my uncle going. <laughs> <laughs> W's took half of my shit Because she doesn't have it He has it Did you ever get his thoughts on all this shit? No well, I only lived a little Like a couple blocks away Never went back over Um No Fuck No well, that's And that's not why my aunt's a bad person That's fine That's not even why she's a bad person at all <laughs> If you think that's why No no no, no. That, That's That's we're not judgmental here. Yeah, nothing bad, not harsh. The other shit I don't even want to get into because that's getting into some shit. She's a bad person. That's it. Wow. But gotcha, bitch. That's what he did to her. <laughs> that's exactly what he did to her, dude. He did this, like what Cam was doing. <laughs> he did that to her. But in all reality, that's him over there on the wall, Homer Simpson, mouth open, <laughs> sloppy as shit. W. Uh, he really took fuck. a W, dude. He God really did. Damn. Yo, what's up, guys? Super stoked and happy and proud and excited to be announcing this new sponsor. This is Raw Rolling Papers. Thank you so much to Raw. Thank you to all the fans. Thank you to Josh for looking at the show and going, no, that's what I want to support. That's where I want to sponsor. So we appreciate it. Raw does not sell direct to consumer. You cannot go to a Raw website and go, let me get a pack of papers. They don't do that. They only do wholesale. So you have to go to your local shop. So what we're doing here on the Dope As Usual podcast is just telling you, if you're going to go smoke some joints, if you're going to go smoke a paper, make it a Raw paper. Josh, I have said it to a many times he is the Willy Wonka of the weed community. If someone's going to invent something, it's probably Josh. I have said so many things to Josh. He goes, I invented that. So right now, go ahead and check out Raw on Instagram. It's Raw Life 247 right here popped up on the screen. The YouTube channel is Raw Papers Official. Josh, thank you so much. And above all, guys, we have something coming very soon that is going to be everyone's going to be excited. So coming soon. I'm not sure how, but an RPG style joint coming to the dope as usual podcast so remember if you're going to smoke a joint make it a raw paper ashtrays tips lighters uh the coolest scales you could think of the craziest trays wooden trays uh trays with the, your favorite rappers and artists of all time raw does everything and anything you can possibly think of in the weed community and they're doing things that they're inventing thank you guys so much back to the episode my uncle's ex-wife did a lot of bad shit to where i'm like i don't, I don't like her but, I, but she's so nice to me. Yeah. And she's still, this is the problem. She's very, 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 very nice to me. She's always been so nice to me, genuinely likes me. And I like her. But she was extremely mean to my cousin Adrian. Remember my uncle went to prison for beating my cousin Adrian? Hmm. It, she's the one that did it. My uncle said that he did it. And then she, he went to prison. So she wouldn't go. Damn. She beat him like the side color of this wall, bro. She used to beat the fuck out. Anyway, she did it so bad one time that he like the teachers were like, "What? What happened?" 
And then they call the cops and like, no, this something. No, he's almost broken. What's happening? Anyway. That's not even why she's a bad person. That's not even why, bro. <laughs> she's, she's bad for that. But I'm saying like later on is when I was like, nope, I can't trust you. And uh, anyway, since, you know, since the divorce and all that, I have other cousins. Remember my cousin that won uh, state champion, the wrestling kid? He's He was the little kid when all this was going on. He was like eight. So when all this was happening... You know, years go by, stuff happens where I'm like, whoa, I can't, I don't like her. Stuff happens. Things go by. She, you know how you hit the punching bag when you walk into the warehouse every time? Bah. She could be the punching bag at every event, family-wise, when she walks in, everybody goes, hey, hey, shut up, <laughs> shut up, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> they all groan and they all go, we remember what you did. Shut up. Yeah. Like, no, we, you'll, you could stay here. Your grandma now. Shut up. Mm. You have no, you don't get, you don't get nothing. Like they're, 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 they all like her, but if she was my mom, I, I would, no, 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 I, I would sweep kick her every day, every day I saw her. Sweep kick, drop a heel, ah, run her chest. Like, I hate you. Sweep kicks are fucking horrible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the reason I'm saying this, all her kids are like, good with her, but they're always, they're also like this. Yeah. Stay back a little. I don't trust you fully, but you can come over with the baby's mom, be the grandma. It gets while tricky. I'm here because I know you're capable of horrible shit. Yes, horrible things, right? But I'm trying Doing to pass that. Shiesty, yeah. wild shit. This is the same lady that got the free pizza when the pizza guy died. I tell you that story. I told you a story. I talked about it right here. I don't remember that one, but maybe she complained to, and I told the story on TikTok and and. You know what's crazy is a lot of people think that my stories aren't real. <laughs> They're like, you got that off Reddit. I'm like, if you knew how uh, anti-computer I am uh, to find Reddit threads, right? You just watch podcasts for the first time. <laughs> yeah, when I hurt my back, I watch podcasting. Oh, we'll get into that too. Um, like, you got that off Reddit. Like, if you, shut up. Shut the fuck up. When I was in Fresno, we my aunt ordered Pizza Hut. I believe it was Pizza Hut. It was Pizza Hut. I just remember the sausages that are circles. Pizza Hut. She ordered hella pizza. It's like 45 minutes, nothing. And my aunt's the lady that will use a car for six years, then go back and get it. Like, no, it's defective. I want my full money back and get it. Mm. She has taken things into Walmart with no receipt and got the money back. She's that woman. She is so. She got uh, my. She got her sister's kids taken away from her into her custody because she. Jesus. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> and then she was getting paid to watch to, to take care of the kids. Her sister. Her sister was like drinking and stuff, but like there wasn't like a CPS report or anything. Like she just swooped. And got custody and the CPS reports done. She got everything. When my uncle and her got divorced, so many, th I think, see, I don't want to get too into it, but she did some shit after that money left. She saw, she had the police confiscate my uncle's truck during my cousin Adrian's graduation because she knew nobody would be at the truck complaining, and cry to the cop and said the abusive husband stole the truck and got the truck made a pink slip. This reminds me of the wife of Ozark. She's insanely good with scamming. Yeah, yeah. She can make paperwork and crazy shit. Mm -hmm. She will cry on cue. She's that white white woman. Yeah. Whew. So, oh, and my mom beat the dog shit out of her when I was a kid. So my mom don't like her at all. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Um, 45 minutes goes by. I'm like, yo, what's up with this pizza? I'm done playing Crash Bandicoot. I'm, I'm hungry, like I'm done. And it, it, it's at the point where Crash is doing this, dancing when you don't touch the controller. Yeah. I'm done eating apples with him. I'm over it right now. And uh hour goes by, my aunt calls. What is going on? She called it 45 minutes also. Let me speak to the manager, Karen. She pulled the whole thing. So sorry, the, the we got, you know, it's rain. It was raining like crazy. So sorry, so sorry. I'm like, all right, an hour calls. I'm like, okay, I I agree. Where's the food at? We're in Fresno. It's not big. 
It is big, but it's 1996, 98. It's not, it's not like populated yet. It is, you know what I'm saying. Anyway, hour 15 goes by. And my aunt calls again, like just, as the person answers, just yelling, blah, 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 and just stops. Oh. Well, where, where, what does that mean for me? Like, what is my, what's that mean for my pizzas? Like, I've been waiting here for this long now. What's going on? Blah, 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 blah. I want free pizza. I need, I know, I need it to be discounted or I need things to be sent for free because at this point, and she's just after the long pause. And I was like, you shut up for a second. What happened? No, 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 no. You stop bitching and you listened. What happened? My dad's there. She gets off the phone. The pizza guy died on the way to our house in a car accident. He's dead. Their coworker died. Here's it. Well, what does that mean for me? Gave it five seconds. 45 minutes later, the most pizza in the world shows up. She ordered like five pizzas. We had stacks. They gave her all the free shit she asked for. The look on the fir- the person's face was blank. I remember I looked like they still delivered it. They still delivered the fucking pizza. We had to remake everything, obviously, because <gasps> the guy died <laughs> with our pizza. They bring her the same pizza. Could you imagine? <laughs> Remade the food, brought it. Bro, I would think the- my aunt told me that. She tells us. The guy, I guess the guy crashed and he he died. And she kind of like, I was like, oh, what did you say? <laughs> and remember, from that time to when the pizza other person comes, I'm sitting there like, if I didn't ask for pizza, oh. like if I didn't ask for pizza, like what if we would have waited and asked for pizza? And I'm going through the whole like OCD shit in my head. Like, well, what if I just, well, what if I asked for like, like asked for some sodas or something or added something? That would have waited and he probably wouldn't have got hit. Or what if we didn't want pizza at all and we just cooked here? Or what if we just got McDonald's? Like, you know, I started doing that shit. I'm like seven, mm-hmm. eight at the most. And I'm sitting here like, he's dead now. Like, I, I was tripping, dude. I was very sad about it. Of course. It. Like, oh, what? Like, the way she said it, he, the pizza driver died. Like, he crashed. She went right back to her life. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there. Little kid oh. just like. <laughs> Crash Bandicoot without the dancing. I was stuck. Then the pizza came, and the driver, I remember the driver's face. They left. I remember I, when I sat down and we were, eat, and then there, I was about to eat the pizza. I'm looking at it like, this doesn't seem as fun anymore. Like, I was really excited to eat this, and now I just feel kind of weird. And then my uncle Abel came home. We told everybody what happened. And they were just like, what the fuck are you talking about? And then that was it. Jesus my Christ. uncle should have known that my aunt was a bad person right then and there. Yeah. He was in prison at the time. Why? Because my aunt beat the dark shadow of my cousin Adrian. So my cousin Adrian was with us too. Like she was, he was still allowed around her, which was insane. It's the same as the camping story. No, no, it was two years after it was then it was a camping story or a year after. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Yeah. She's, she's morphed into a full evil movie character throughout the story here. But, but that was when I was a child. Mm-hmm. Before Oregon. So when I was in Oregon... I remember one time we were doing paperwork and my cousin Adrian walked out the room. My cousin, that's his, that's his mom essentially. Does everything she asks, like helps. He's nice. He's nice. Yeah. He walked out the room, closed the door. I don't know if she forgot I was standing there, but she like, God, I fucking hate him. That's all Ooh. she said about him. Just to herself? Ooh. God, I fucking hate him. And I just stayed kind of quiet. And then she went back to paperwork and then I said something and she's like, oh yeah, so we're doing this. I was like, did you know I was here? Or did you not know I was here? <laughs> because one is definitely worse than the other. If you did know I was here, yeah. you're a 
monster. If you didn't, then you're just being. Oh, bleep that. Bleep that, Marty. Bleep that because we're definitely going to get in trouble. I've been trying my best to, uh, to not say stuff. Oh, man. I did that, I did that once when I was a kid. I was walking down the you hallway. Did what? I was walking down the hallway and I said some horrible shit to oh. my mom under my breath. My dad was like in the bathroom. I was like, I like stopped. I like, dad, I like, yeah, buddy. Like, Fuck. Just that. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> I was like eight. Should I can't repeat on YouTube? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> oh, Just that's when he's like, that's doors my kid. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Ugh. That's the worst. That was one of the most embarrassing moments in life, right there. I don't know if embarrassing is the right word, but just it's embarrassing. Yeah. Shamed. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Shamed, like, oh. I said I was gonna beat mom to death. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh -huh. Pizza Kid dies. <laughs> 15 years later, bam. They're divorced. Okay. <sighs> Does all a bunch of shit that I don't really want to talk about because I don't know if they want me to talk about it. Did a bunch of terrible things. Horrible shit. So when they walk in, shut up, shut up, shut up. So when they walk into the party, like, hey, mom, shut up. That's the vibe I get from them. They're, they're all her kids. My cousins are more like, we didn't forget, but you can be. Yeah, here. it's weird you to see here. that. Like, it's it's great, but this is the reason why I'm saying. Okay. My cousin Adrian, that's his, that's like his mom still. Like yeah. he, he he still you know Christmas all that shit. He's mm -hmm. and I always tell him like I don't know how you can do it. I wouldn't talk to anybody. Yeah. I wouldn't talk to your dad. I wouldn't because are you in the right or in the wrong for my cousin being Adrian, nice to somebody that's you know is evil. He's the strongest brain person I've ever met. I would actively be hunting them down for the type of, I don't want to talk about all yeah. of it, but I'd be trying to hunt them down. I, I would hate my mom. I would hate my uncle. I'd hate my stepmom. Yeah. No. Death. I have to. Second, I got strong enough. He doesn't. He's like, give him Christmas presents and yeah. like their grandma and grandpa to his kids, yeah. all that shit. So he's very awesome for that. But he's also like, shut up. Shut up. Two yeah. to her, like mm -hmm. all the other kids are, right? Because my uncle and them had six other kids besides my cousin. Mm -hmm. So at my cousin Angelica's, which is her daughter, my cousin Angelica's baby shower, we're all sitting there. Everybody we're talking about. My Aunt yeah. Tanya gets there. She walks in the backyard. You know, the grass, cement, pathway. Smith steps, slips, breaks her leg in half <laughs> at the start of the baby shower. <laughs> and nobody helped her. Oh. <laughs> All the kids were like, All right, well, I got to set up inside. With a legit, like, compound fracture leg. <laughs> To break your leg just falling while walking is crazy. She like slipped off and cried and broke Ooh. it. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I think it's so funny. I felt bad after because I saw her and I went, oh, she's like kind of crying. Like She's hurt. I feel bad now. I was laughing. She just fell. But now I'm like, oh, no, I feel bad for you. You're hurt. Mm -hmm. Even though you're a bad person, it's more yeah. like you're still hurt and your family's not helping you. That's not cool. Yeah. That's sad. You you feel bad no matter what. Yeah, of course. That's why I don't like getting in fights. Even though someone tried to rob me or something, I'm like, I, f I feel bad for you. Like, I don't want to be getting in the face either. Yeah, that's sad. So, um, all the kids periodically went out there, like, yeah, right, you're okay, you're okay. And then the, and then the ambulance got there, and they're like, wait, she's hurt. Not done. The party started while she was in the backyard. It fully started for her first grandchild. Oh, no, no, second, second. Okay, sorry, second. But uh, she broke her leg walking into the party. I think it kind of makes, like, if she had 10 points of evil, maybe it knocks a couple off for the kids. And then I went, Adrian, she really broke her leg. He goes, ah, I'm going to be dealing with that right now. While inside the air conditioned living room, she's outside the backyard window, just broken. <laughs> so, um, the reason I bring it up is because 
they eventually helped her. Everybody had to help her get on the gurney. And then she got taken to the hospital. And then we did the entire party. The best part was is she set up about 70% of everything. Went to get something, came back and broke her leg. And then everybody just sat at her party that she put together. But it makes up for like a lot of the bad, I think. I got to be honest. It does make up for a lot of the bad. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what happened to, to my uncle's ex-wife, Tanya. Now that's funny. Um yeah, dude, there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of stories out there. <laughs> there's a lot of bad stuff that's happened. Um, yeah, I don't know if I should go into everything else, but I think that was pretty much it. <coughs> also, <coughs> my little sister starts college this week. Next week, she moves to her dorm this weekend. It's crazy. Oh, wait, it's Saturday. And today's Monday that it drops. My little sister started college today. Yeah. Wow. Nice. It's Crazy. pretty fucking awesome. It's pretty wild. What's she, she going for? Oh, she told me like the two things. And, oh, nursing. She be a nurse. She's going for medical. But yeah, guys. I uh, just wanted to get through that. What are we at right now? Are you talking shit about my family for an hour 18. and 18 minutes? It's yeah, insane. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> I was cool. I have shit like that in my family too. I was fucking just like really into that story right there. <laughs> yeah. 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 I got a wonky ass story. A oh, wonky. <laughs> I like the description. Go, go. Somebody's hips are off. It kind of it feels like my bomb threat story a little bit. Is it recent? Yeah, this was just like this week. What? So we got a call from uh my daughter's principal. Like, it's like the second day of school. Yeah. And we get a call from the principals like, we got Ariana down here. <laughs> for a, uh, There was an email that was sent about a school shooting that Stop. we need to talk to you guys about. Not the call we expected whatsoever. We were both like. What would you say? What the fuck are you talking about? So he sends an email that was sent to his email, the assistant Principles, e direct email from Ariana's email of this giant black dude with this huge gut holding an AK-47. That's all it is. This dude's gr grown adult. Really a, cre a weird meme picture. Okay? <laughs> me, like huge gut, shirtless gun. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> and uh, I, I think... Like the subject of the email was like school shoot something with that in the title. Like, is he, is he bald by chance? I don't know. I don't remember. I just looked at it quick. It looked okay. like a meme of a picture. Okay. Yeah, I think I know where you're going with this. Continue. Well, the shoot was just so. Now we're like, okay, she clearly didn't do this. Something's. If you're gonna do something goofy like this you don't email the principal yeah from your email directly to the principal <laughs> like picture of a guy with a gun <laughs> danger and she's even acting to the dude like obviously i didn't do this like what you know what i mean what do you let's try to figure this out because he was like understandably pressing the shit out of her <laughs> you know I mean? and like trying to get to the <laughs> bottom of that shit now I'm thinking, first of all, okay, is the SWAT team about to boot our fucking door in? Because, like, you know, they, they could. Like, this is there's some key hot words going down with this fucking email here. And they're calling us pretty pissed off. So, come to find out, she was at a neighboring restaurant to her school waiting to get picked up after school and let a kid charge his phone on her school fucking uh, laptop that they get. She forgets the kid has the fucking laptop and gets picked up immediately because we went back through it, got the laptop back, went back through the history and watched what happened. The kid logs in and he Google searches. This is what, this is what gets me. So now he's got access to her computer and he's like, he Google searches like dude, man with gun or, or like, no, he Google searched. Fat black dude, I think, was the search. Very specific. And then fat black dude with gun. 
and then decided to send that to the principal. So this was like an on the fly decision for this kid. I'm going to try to see if I can pop this goddamn picture up on the screen because it's almost like the Kevin clock picture, how just shockingly weird it is. Same idea with this fucking picture of this kid. To then send to the principal. From her computer. From her computer. Who is this kid? Just a random kid. Did she see him at school? Yeah, like a kid that's like. I need to beat his ass. <laughs> that's that's grounds for getting at least smacked in the that's face. Some, I'm not saying go hit kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right, before we continue, I'm not saying go beat up child, children. Children. So I'm just saying if I was under 18, I'd be like, hey, man, you've been doing that shit to me. But I was like thinking like, what a weirdo. What a weirdo to like. What a weirdo. You get a kid's computer and this is the first <laughs> thing you think to do. Like it's not going to come back to you. Like they're not going to, if they want to, go pull the cameras up this you know, place across the street or like kick in your door. Like what the fuck? Do you, like what? If you're gonna do some stupid shit, don't you normally get something out of it? Like, you know what it or is. are you just twacked out and you know? You know what it not is. All there. He just wanted us to talk about him on the show. He's a fan. He's like, how am I gonna get them to talk? Like, you know, I'm gonna do some weird <laughs> shit. He's just Boom. a genius. <laughs> Fuck. The show is cracking in her school. That's a fucking fact. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, I'm thinking about this different now. That's hilarious. Yo, what's up, guys? Just taking a moment to talk about one of our brand new sponsors here on the podcast. This is Freeze Pipe. I know a lot of you are looking at it. It's just a regular piece. What's the difference? Well, this is the difference. Take this clip off. This goes directly into the freezer. No, that's not water in there. That's glycerin, and it freezes. All the smokers out there, you know how dumb it is when you're sitting there and it starts to overflow on you. You get too much water, then you suck it in. You forgot, oh, yeah, the ice melted. So never worry about the ice melting again with the freeze pipe. So introducing for the freezepipe.com, this is the mini bong, and this is the tornado bong. Remember, these right here go in the freezer, not the whole bong. The water will freeze, and your bong will break. Just the glycerin tops go in the freezer. So right here, this is the mini bong. This is the most portable thing all of this breaks down into pieces goes right in there down here you have the inline perk and above that is the honeycomb perk up next this right here guys is the tornado bong this is brand new and in here it looks like little shards of glass but it's the actual perk thank you so much for supporting the brands that support us i'm gonna rip this and get back to the episode Ooh. What's up, guys? This ad read is sponsored by Manscaped. As always, go to manscaped.com forward slash YOLO to get 20% off plus free shipping. It is the deal of deals. If you've ever been curious about any of it, go ahead and try it out. Use our code. Remember, it's 20% off and free shipping, and you're helping the show out. We've talked about this whole summer. Don't have a dirty dick, all right? We've talked about it for two years. Don't have dirty dick and balls. Your significant other does not want to see that. Just keep yourself tidy. Keep yourself manscaped ready. Crop mops. If your balls are gross and sweaty and nasty, use the crop mop. Been free balling it all summer? How about get the Boxers 2.0? They come in the Performance Package 4.0. As we always say, for the other head in your life, we have shampoo, two-in-one conditioner. And for your other head and the other parts of your body, this is the body wash. And the latest and greatest for manscaped, the body buffer. Remember, guys, Manscaped is not just to shave. It is every single thing you can think of for male hygiene. Go to manscaped.com right now. Manscaped.com forward slash Yola or Yola at checkout. 20% off plus free shipping. Thank you guys so much for supporting us. Thank you for watching the show. Back to the episode. On to something new. Something that's relevant and not from childhood or something. Something that, you know, keywords and algorithms might pick up. Let's go. Ready? I heard that there was a Barbie movie. I'm like, hmm, real life Barbie movie? That's kind of funny, I guess. What's the concept? Like, they know that they're toys? Oh, okay, like uh, small soldiers or something? <laughs> My sister likes good shit. My sister likes good music for the most part, likes good movies for the most part that I would agree with. Talk to her on some Friday. Hey, what are you doing? She's like, oh, I went and watched a Barbie movie. I'm like, oh, how was? She goes, like, honestly, it was pretty funny. I liked it. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, all right, you said enough. That's all I needed to hear. I'm going to watch it. That night, went to watch it, and I text her. No, it's too deep in the text. I text her these words. You ready? At about 40 minutes in, I text her, 
What's wrong with you? I've almost left twice. This movie sucks. Mm -hmm. So at about 40 minutes in, I went, okay, come on. All right, come on. Hurry up. And it's not animated, right? It's no, it's real life movies movie. with humans. And then I was like, so if I roll a blade on Venice, be, wait, what is that? What? And then, and then I'm like, is this for kids? And then it got to like an empowerment part. And I went, this is not for kids, is it? And then I won't ruin the movie for you. <laughs> it was a part where Barbie and Will Ferrell's in it. Barbie and Will Ferrell like scare each other and go, ah, in a lit up room while they're actively running and looking for each other. So to be scared of the person like, yo, found you. Not, whoa, but you were looking for her. Mm -hmm. And I went, oh, it's a kid's movie. And then I was like, wait, no, it's not a kid's movie. And I went, what happened? Why am I here? <laughs> and then as I was walking down the stairs to leave the theater, you know, the room, and then go out to the theater hallway, I went, I would have rather have been jogging mm. and working out. Mm. That's most things in life. No, I hate jogging. It hurts my back. I would have rather have been jogging than sitting comfortably oh, high as shit oh, wow. watching okay, that movie. I Damn. I, I hated it. Wow. I really did not like it at all. And I was very disappointed in it. I don't think I've ever heard you say that about a movie. I had, you know, you know why? Because I had such high hopes for it. I thought it was going to be real funny because Ryan oh, Gosling's the man. Okay. He's awesome. He was kind of funny in there. Uh, it just wasn't what I expected at all. This video, I saw some people, I haven't uh, watched this yet, but I saw some people coming at Theo about this clip about Barbie. Oh, uh, we might watch it. Yeah, let's do it. Have you ever watched clips on here? No. How we never watch? <clears throat> and somebody Sorry, asked me, they said, hey, buddy, you seen Barbie? You seen Barbie movie? And I said, no, I haven't seen it because, well, I'm an adult male. I'm an adult male. And I'm not seeing Barbie movie because I'll tell you why I think it is for children or gay children um, <laughs> or child gays or whatever. I don't know. I don't want to offend anybody. I do not know the terminology. And it's Barbie. And I'm an adult man. So I don't want to see it. Look, when I was a child, if a man saw Barbie movie, then your mom was going to leave that man. And that's how you got a stepdad. People were like, hey, what happened to your dad? Well, he saw the Barbie movie. And my mom read between the lines. <laughs> and realized he was probably rubbing dudes off by the shun. <laughs> Yo, that was, that, people are mad? Yeah, that's how I came to see it on Twitter. Is cause, people are mad about yeah. it? Yeah. That's funny. Stop. <laughs> Because the next thing I was about to talk about <laughs> was about his, po okay, not that, but ready? Uh -huh. I get the back doctor. My back doctor is super cool. <laughs> okay. Super nice dude. Uh -huh. Obviously, he, he would marry a man. He's into dudes. Uh -huh. Obviously, and I'm only saying obviously by stereotypical traits and, you know, friends, my family members, people I know. people. Like, like, oh, so you like dudes. Okay, cool. Life's cool. experience. Yeah, life experience. All right, cool. He was super tight, super tight. Yeah. He, after my fourth compliment he gave me, I went, oh, you're like dudes, okay, got you. <laughs> gotcha. Common sense told you. Gotcha. <laughs> and after I, I went, Rosie like, I think my doctor would have tried to have sex with me, Rosie, if you weren't here. She goes, oh God, <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> He's super cool, but I'm not saying like he was coming on me, I'm just like, thank you, very nice, thank you for, yeah, thank you, I like my teeth too. Shave him down. They've been shaving. <laughs> <laughs> Took a little off the tops. No, but anyway, he was super cool. Obviously, a little flamboyant, right? He brought up the Barbie movie. And you know when you meet somebody oh, new man. and you're like, Red Hot Chili Peppers comes on and both of you go, oh man, I... And you're like, is he going to say hate or love this song? Love, and they're like, hey, and they go, ah, sorry, I hate this man. And you're like, oh, I love them. Oh, man, I don't know if we have to a good start right now. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like that's you ever get that way about a song yeah. or something. So he brought up the Barbie movie, and I went. He goes, she. He went. How did you like it? I went. Should I go in or like? Are you one of those fools that just love it? Mm -hmm. So what you say? I went. I looked at Rosie. And I did what any nice person does. I went. 
I just didn't like it as much as I thought I was going to like it. Mm, that's a good stock answer. Yeah, it's, it's honest though. Perfect. It's perfect. It's like saying, "Oh, I thought you were sisters. That's your daughter." It's the same <laughs> thing. I'm going, "Oh, oh, yeah," because you're never like, "Is he being serious?" But if you think that you could be like, "Oh, thank you," I thought so. Saying the same thing. It's uh -huh. up to your interpretation. Yeah, yeah. But either one's not bad because mm -hmm, technically you, know? you still could like it. But just yeah, I lo loved really. it. I just thought it was going to be way cooler. I thought they were going to have animation. Yeah. No, nah, I just kept it like that. And he just, oh, he went in. But he's like, um, uh, uh, what he, whatever Theo said right now, I was like, okay, I get it. I get it. Like, why, why would, you know, I mean, grown dudes can watch whatever they want. But also, if you're like, yo, the Bart movie, let's go get it. Like, hmm. Hmm. Because if that was, if I was a girl and that my boyfriend's like, oh my God, we're going to see Bart. Like, <laughs> Yeah, that's mm. a great point. My whole family okay. went without me, and they said there was a lot of dads there and shit. So, of course, there's a lot of dads there. They're taking their kids, man. He's talking about male adults going by themselves. I think that's what Theo was talking about. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because well, he has to have kids, my doctor. And he just no, he said with his boyfriend. He said your mom is going to leave your dad. Read between that's the lines. funny. That's funny. <laughs> He's a comedian. He's supposed to make things hilarious, and I laughed. That's the most passion I've ever seen Theo speak on something. With. That was funny. <laughs> it's the reason he's funny. Because he like, it's not like he put that act on and was like, no, oh. you're funny if you just, you're yourself and go, hey, that was funny. Like, was it? I was just talking. Uh -huh. Sick. <laughs> um, that's pretty much a lot of comedians like, oh yeah, you're just, like we all sass, but you can say whatever. And I think you're just going to be funny about it. Um, yes, my doctors loved it. Loved it. Uh -huh. um, I did. I just didn't like it. I just thought it was gonna be funnier. Really, I, that's it. I thought it was gonna be funnier. Mm -hmm. So when you make the clip about the Barbie, please put this part in there too, so people will just come and try to stab me. Um, I just did not think it was okay. that good. Uh, and I got real deep, like try to get deep, and I was like, "Hey, do that. Don't do that. We, we're Don't care about sure. that. Yeah. I'm here for this. Fly or something. Make uh -huh. a big hand come from the sky and play with you." Like as Barbies because I like Will Sasso's poster of the Barbie shit. That was cool. All that the pair, all the clips and everything I've seen online are great. Uh -huh. I'm like, yo, that movie. Okay, I might go watch that. And then I watched it, and then I text, and then after I left, I went. I don't know if I can trust my sister's opinion anymore mm -hmm. because don't forcefully say you liked it because you liked it. Just say you like Margot Robbie, bitch. Just say you, you think she's attractive and that's why you oh, went to she's watch Barbie. it. Yeah. Which made me want to go watch it too. She's awesome. Mm -hmm. She's good in every movie I've seen her in. Mm -hmm. Ryan Gosling is awesome also. Mm -hmm. so I'm like, yo, this is perfect. <laughs> they made a billion dollars already, these fools. Damn. But I get it though. Every kid in the world's gonna go and go, why is it getting so hard to understand? It? And the parents are like, it's getting deep and philosophical. So <laughs> I was sitting there going, Why? <laughs> what the fuck? That was it. Sorry, that was my my movie analysis. I just right. I just didn't think it was gonna. I thought it was gonna be way funny. Uh -huh. Wasn't funny. That's it. All right, well, that's a fair opinion. That's it. I saw the uh, Ninja Turtles in what? luxury. In what luxury? I thought you said in mushery. Well, that too. You took mushrooms and yeah. they washed it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 what the fuck? <laughs> Was it the bootleg Kev mushrooms? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, them, I like those. Those are cool. Like, shout the out tops, to bootleg right? Kev, first of all, for having you on the show, but second of shout all, for having some Kev. cool little uh, fucking chews. Some chews. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I dipped my toe in the day before with like two of them. And I was like, okay. Because I'm like, there's no way I'm going to feel fucking two of them. So That's I just a, did two. It went about my day. I was like, I'm feeling pretty fucking goofy. I'm feeling two of them for sure. So then I think it was like the next day or the <laughs> feel <laughs> pretty fucking goofy. <laughs> Took like three of them uh, earlier and then went to it. And uh, it was, it wasn't as good as Milo's Morales, the uh, OG one. That's like my favorite animation up to this point. Oh, oh, it's an animated turtles. Yeah. Oh, see, I, I really don't pay attention. Well, there's so many different goddamn turtles. Yeah. This one's animated. The style of animation was pretty cool. I didn't like it as much as the Miles Morales one, but I was noticing a lot of little fucking minute details in the animations. Like, 
because you're shit, on drugs. nobody else was fucking noticing. <laughs> I just think it's really awesome that you could just be like, yeah, I took mushrooms. My children had no idea that I was in mushrooms, <laughs> but you know, we were in the theater. That's insane. Yeah, it was but just cool. light. Yeah, it was you know a nice light thing. I don't know if I'd really fully recommend you go spend two hours on the turtles, but it wasn't bad. I like animated movies when they really hit. This one was cool. Ice Cube's character was the shit. He didn't come in until kind of late in the movie. I really liked him. Huh. I don't know. I'm just not a big animation fan anymore. Unless it's like some Pixar shit. Because they always have six stories. I don't follow the fucking storyline. I'm looking at the animation. I'm looking at the cool glowy effects you got going on. For the kids? Yeah. I'm a child. I'm a child <laughs> when I watch children's movies. I'm not even listening. I'm spilling popcorn on the fucking ground. <laughs> Yo, the um, movies, I don't know. The movies are just... I can't go to a regular movie, by the way. I need the full experience in order to make it make sense. Of the lazy boy with the waiter. Of course. What the hell? That's, a, that's the best part ever. Yeah. It's so fun. If you didn't know, go to Look, AMC, has them, I think. Sinopolis. What? That's Actually, a real thing? Yeah. Sinopolis? Yeah. Everything I hear, Opolis, I always think of Jesse... Uh, from from Full House. Oh. Jesse something Opolis. Cassopolis. Cassopolis. That's all I ever think. <laughs> then I thought of applesauce as a kid. See? Stupid. Dumb thoughts. That acid. Yo, it's that acid for real. Some shit, <laughs> dude. Something. Cassopolis. Cassopolis. Something dumb. Slopolis. All right? Don't be worried about that? it. Don't worry about it. Um. <laughs> yeah, I got so lost right now. Yes, I did the Bootleg Kev podcast. Go check that out. Boom, over the screen. Shout out to Bootleg Kev. That was fun. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. Little update. If you don't watch the episode, I'll tell you this. I told you part of it. I've done many story times. All right? Every story time happens to me or I watched it or it happened as I was watching it happen. It's never like, so my friend said, you know, he saw 50 pounds in an old man's trunk. Like, this just doesn't happen. I don't do that because it's not my story. I've done a lot of story times, and a lot of, a lot of you know what's crazy is when I hear them back, I go, damn, I haven't talked to that fool forever. And I, it's like, I forget. I get so wrapped up watching. I'm like, damn, fool, that was you. That was crazy. And then I think, like, bro, you've done some stupid shit in your life. And yeah, I have, which is cool. But a lot of people ask, like, come on, for you exaggerate. Like, nah. The fuck do you want me to say? I wouldn't just do, I just wouldn't do the story. All right? If I didn't happen to me, I just wouldn't do it. Because why would I put it on something that didn't really happen? That's the whole point of story times. Or else I'd be having 50 a day. I'd have the biggest views on YouTube. I'd just pump out 30 a month. One a day. One story a day. If they weren't real. <laughs> Right? Be a rapper. Yeah, you'd be a rapper at that point. Put out <laughs> a mixtape a day. Um, so the reason I'm saying this is the only things I've ever said that are not true in story time are some names, uh -huh. some locations, and some uh, dates. I have to throw a lot of different dates out for certain things, certain reasons. Maybe in the future I'll be able to talk to you about that. But if, as of now, I cannot. Dates I change 100% for my safety. Locations I change for other people's safety and names I change for mine and other people's safety <laughs> because I don't want to be saying everything because people might get very upset. Um, so the reason I say this is, boom, bootleg have podcast, right? I go to this building and I'm like, hmm. Oh, I've never been to this part of town, I don't think. Okay, I'm not going to say where it's at. All right. I walk in and I'm like... <laughs> Sick place, man. Nice. Walking in, I see, and we go in, I look in, I'm like, nice, nice. And there's something, you know, something in the back of your head, like, do I see something familiar or don't I? Or is my brain wanting me to say yes so I can think of that? Who cares? I walk out, walk out the first building, walk through the back little parking lot to the second building. I get to the second parking lot. I mean, the parking lot to the second building. In between, I look at the fence and the driveway. It's super gated, super guarded, like nicely. 
And I go, damn, nice spot, man. He goes, yeah, thanks, man. I went, wait. Stop. And my brain always does that stuff in movies. And you know what I mean? Like where it stops to let you think. Mm -hmm. That's how I think of a lot of things. It just, I stopped and went, wait. And I just went in my brain and went, why have you been in this exact situation? Where are you at? What were you looking at? What did you say? I was looking this way toward the gate and I went, nope. And I turned around and went, I've been right here before. And I could see like the screenshot from my, what I remember from this place. And I went, I've been right here. Except there was a giant man with a gun. <laughs> That's all I remember. Like there was a huge dude. I remember that gate. I remember that gate. I remember the back of this building, except it's a different color. I look at bootleg Kev and I go, I've been here before. As he's walking me into the second building, remember I was like, man, nice spot. He goes, yeah, man, we actually just, did. and then I went, stop. And I went, hey, I've been here before. I know I have. And he looks at me and goes, Asian guys and packs. And I said, yes. That's exactly what it is. Do you remember the story time where I go to the, I can't say the name, but I go to the place that uh, I walk into the giant guard. I walk into the giant guard and the giant guard like lets me in the giant buff ass man with a gun. He walks us in. Remember I said I walk down the hallway. I'm like, oh, it's all white walls. and like. This place is wild. And I walked in and there was the old Asian man on the computer smoking a cigarette with hundred different screens on the wall. And he had every pack range you can think of. Remember I walked into the Walmart facile facility. Remember this? I talked about this on story time. A lot of you are like, oh yeah, I remember that story. It's the same building. Ridiculous. <laughs> As I walked in, I go, but my memory's off. And that's when I kind of questioned myself. Like my memory's off. Cause swore it was wider right here. And there was a wall, there was two doors right there. I'm like, I could have swore there was. Or there was a wall there. I was like, I could have swore there was a wall instead of a door. And then where I said, I walked, he walked, sit right here. Your meeting's next. And the guy sat us in there. We had a little TV that was kind of like, and I think it was Jerry Springer or Maury. Pretty sure it was Jerry Springer. It was playing, we're just like, we buy packs at this was the building because bootleg kev as we were talking about he goes yeah i had to move a wall too i'm like that's what it is he goes yeah i had to move some stuff it was a little crowd i'm like yeah there used to be a huge desk right there and they took it out wow so it's the same building the the uh typing cigarette that's bootleg kev's studio all state of the art studio, all sick of wall platinum plaques and sick shit. That used to be where the man sat with files, and the guy would come in with a cart with all the packs, sat there with the notebook, all the screens on the wall, all gone. Uh, the little room next to it is just a studio, as a booth. Mm -hmm. The uh, place where I sat and watched Jerry Springer is now a different studio he rents out to somebody. Uh, all the wall, the plaques, this, that, walking down the thing to the left where I saw the industrial size drums of packs where he had metric I got metric ton of that I got metric ton of that metric ton, I had 2,000 pounds of that mm -hmm. and then all the cameras were all the buildings and the back building where we did the podcast remember we walked through the building walked through the back building was the building that I kept seeing on the camera where it had all the shelves it was just shelves and packs perfectly placed hundreds of them I couldn't believe it was the same place. And as I sit down to do the podcast, I'm just going through my head, going through my head, going through my head like, so that's, oh, so when I walked in, so all this is the room I couldn't see because I remember when I walked the building, there's no room that big. That makes sense. Wow. And then he said, you're the second person telling me that. He said another guest. That one guest like came through and said he bought packs there. And he's like, you just confirmed it right now. I was like, yeah, dude, this was the place. Like all I hear, like this was the spot. This is from multiple people have told me. Then he said, a few people have gone by asking if it was a weed shop. 
because I think their front, they put themselves on weed maps as oh. a dispensary and they never took themselves off. Oh, Jesus Christ. So that place is still on weed maps. So he's like, yeah, we had a couple like old people come in like, yo, is this a shot? Like, this is a recording studio. Can you guys go away? Like knocking on the door. Like, no, this is not on weed maps. We're not a dispensary. So that reassured <laughs> me like, so this, this really is it. It's not my imagination running through. So the reason I say I change locations sometimes like, little things so people don't remember or people don't know like I've, I've talked about a story where I talked about there was metal walls in this building blah 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 it was metal and it was wood but that's a big difference someone goes oh he ain't talking about our, he ain't talking about that spot mm -hmm. yeah for sure you, you know what I'm saying like not all metal walls and all metal walls with some wood is a different place mm -hmm. so people with the wood spot are gonna go well he can't be talking about us then he said all metal there's a lot of little things I'm thinking of as I'm talking about. Like, don't say that. Yeah. Don't change that. Hey, actually, hold on. Cut that. I'll go, Marty, can you cut that? Cut that. Say it again. Because I'm like, no, it's too easy to pinpoint and go, no, that, that's who he's talking about. Like, I talked about a certain dude that passed away, a huge weed dealer. And I, it's crazy how many people know each other. You know what I mean? I don't want people, even though the guy's gone, I don't want people like, yo, why you talk about my brother's business like that? I'm like, <sighs> Shut up. Shut up, Anton. You know, like, basically, you got like, shut up. But I get it. Like, that's why I change certain things because I don't want everybody to be direct. But when I walked outside after I left Bootleg Kev, I go, that's crazy. In the, in, the, in the story time, I described the building looking different. I described it a little different so nobody would ever know. Mm. But remember, I said, it's in the middle of a town. Yeah. When I got back in the car, I went, it's right. I've eaten at a restaurant right there. This place was right here. It was right when I moved, right before I moved to LA. So yeah. I didn't know LA well. Mm -hmm. What are the odds? It's years, more than almost a decade later. Ridiculous. Crazy. That's like, it's almost like that story. Was that before the podcast where it's like with our new brand partner and then you, like, would you like hold the door for somebody or some shit? And she's like, oh, I work for them. Oh, yesterday. <laughs> yesterday we have a new brand partner we're bringing on, Zotix. All right? We're taking, all right? Thank you, Zotix, very much. Appreciate you. Zotix we're about to start working with. Had a meeting with them, a call. Right? Yesterday. Yesterday at about 3. I go see the car. I'm on Monte Carlo. I go check it out, 3.30. Drive to a restaurant. Eat. i leaving the restaurant. Every time I see someone, like, driving, like, you trying to park? Like, yo, wait, I'm leaving, right? You know what I mean? Like, trying to help, like, I'm gonna help you out because I know how shit it is to yeah. park over here. And I'm like, hey. No, I'm walking into my car and some girl pulls up. She's like, are you guys leaving? I'm like, yeah, take the spot. She's like, oh my God, yes. She was all hyped. I'm like, oh, I like you. You got all hyped <laughs> up. And uh, I open the door for Rosie, let her in. I'm opening my door. She goes, hey, love the videos, by the way. I went, Oh, hell yeah. Thanks. Like, yeah. Dope Yola, right? Stone or die. I'm like, yeah, that's sick. Thank you. And then she said that. So I'm like, Rosie, let me get my jar. So I got some nugs. I'm like, every time I see somebody, if I have it, I'm like, yo, here, mm -hmm. smoke that. So I'm walking up to her car and I go to like fist bump her. I, I go to grab her some weed. She's like, oh, what's up? And fist bumps me. I'm like, oh, yeah, but I was trying to give you this nugs. And she's like, oh, thank you. She's like, hold on, I got something for you. I just started working for some for a brand. I'm like, really? And she busts the bag out. I go, Zotix. She goes, yeah, have you heard of him? I go, yeah, I just had a meeting with him an hour ago. She goes, for real? Go, yeah. She's like, with Chris. I go, with Chris and Jeanette. Just had a meeting with them <laughs> with my partner. She goes, wow. Like, yeah, how wild. Here, take the space. I felt so bad taking the weed from her. I'm like, I, keep the weed. Like, I'm not going to take your Zotix bag. Yeah. I'm, I, we're working with him right now. I feel bad. Like, even though yeah. it might be her job to do, but like, you'll give it to somebody else. I'm going to have a lot of it. Like, uh -huh. I'll have weed, so I don't want to be like taking your stuff. Yeah. But what are the odds of that? It's fucking insane. Right after the other. Crazy like, that just shit. happens, man. In LA. Always. 10 million people. Always happens like that to me. I don't think there's really 10 million people. Well, like 20? I don't think less. there is. I think there's like fucking 30. <laughs> I'll be driving around, see the same people, the same part of town. Like, bro. <laughs> What are the, or I'll, you ever drive like down Fairfax or Melrose at 11 and you're like, or three in the morning and be the only car on the road? I find that very odd. That yeah, is. 
there's millions of people here. Where are they? Mm-hmm. Like the tw- tweakers, tw- they go somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But where are they? <laughs> Behind one door, there's 50,000 people in LA, I <sighs> guess. Because I don't see people walking around. I feel like the, at night, people are just, I think I think what it was is the pandemic. Everybody's like, I'm, I like being inside. I think that's what happened. Man. <laughs> because Hollywood and everything is so dead, right? When like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock is dead. Really? Yeah, he used to be like very active. I don't know. I don't know. I could be wrong. You tell me. I haven't lived here forever. Orange County's been like that. There's not one. It's different. There's not bars. There's not nightlife. There's not. There nothing. is, but not, not like where what you're thinking. No, <laughs> no, not at all. Um, damn. All we do is talk about a bunch of, bunch of sad people's drama today. Just a catch up episode. It's so okay. Story time. It's okay. I feel like a little lost. A little brain it's fucking. Maybe it's the oh, oh we have one more joint. We have one more joint. It's a little ass end. What you got in that little ass end? <laughs> Same weed we've been smoking the whole time. <laughs> and what's that? The lemon poppers. Oh, nice. Tastes a little different. I don't know why. I was like, did it? Nice. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, guys, thank you so much. We're not, I'm not done. I'm just. Hey, thank you guys so much for being here. If you how long have we been here? Almost one fifty. Wow. It's cruising right away. Really flew by. Yeah. Holy shit. And uh, we're supposed to be, this is coming out, we, this is a one-day turnaround episode, but oh, in yes. that one day, we're supposed to be having an alleged hurricane, so we'll see how that goes. Oh, yeah. We'll see. I hope not. But also, Marty, we're going to start doing it at the beginning of every episode. We're going to start putting our socials, right? When, before, the, so, before the intro drops, all our social medias, and our number one thing that we're going to start pushing forever now, go follow us on Spotify, even if you get it for free. Even the free version of Spotify, please go follow Dope as Usual on Spotify. We are brand partners, official brand partners. We are now shows to watch. Coming up very soon, our will be on the front. Shows to watch, upcoming shows. Banners on the homepage, geo targeted across Spotify. the world on Spotify with the Let's audio go. ads and Spotify for podcasters. Their other product. Also, they monetized us, guys. Oh shit! Oh, leave, leave. Who was it? Who was it? <laughs> that was fucking <laughs> Vincent Price. Evil laugh. Jason Ellis. That's what I meant. <laughs> oh, also, hold on, real quick. Something really funny. Jason Ellis. I know he's not going to get upset about this. It's really funny. Uh, you know Ralph, my my yeah. cousin. He was on a date. He's been on dating apps, right? He's a single dude. He just moved out to LA. <laughs> Last night, I put an ice bag on my back. And I'm like, ow! And I was uh, smoking a bowl. And Ralph comes up. He shows something to Rosie. He goes, hey. I'm like, what? I'm like, what is it? And he, goes, he comes over to me. He goes, isn't your homeboy you had on the podcast? And I go, who? And he shows me on the dating app. And it's Jason Ellis. <laughs> on the dating app. Mm. And Ralph went, I put in women only. <laughs> That's the thing. He's like, <laughs> I put in women. Why is Jason Ellis on here? Oh, Obviously, shit. Jason is bisexual. Uh-huh. But it was the funny. He's like, is this guy on your podcast? I went, it is actually. Pound it's pound, Jason Ellis. One of the manliest dudes alive. <laughs> it's, it's just wild that he went, I'm on a dating app. And the guy that you interviewed is on here. I'm like, Jason Ellis, skater, sick, podcaster. What are the odds? And uh-huh. it's just like a picture of Jason Ellis. That's funny. I always I don't think oh. of him as a skater. I think of him as like an MMA dude. Sick skater though. It's just pretty fucking funny though. Yeah, I just thought <laughs> when, when you just said it, I just thought it was just too funny. I had to this was last night, 12 hours ago. <laughs> that was him when he was like women's category. Women's and categories and, and laughing. <laughs> Jason Ellis, you're a menace for that. That was good. That was good. But yeah, it popped up on his dating uh, app last night. I thought it was the funniest shit in the world. What are the odds? Uh, dating is different. Last time I was, I was fucking... We, shit didn't exist. Like, people... The world is different. Imagine dating somebody through a dating app that's used to just the world now. Like, I wouldn't even know how to fucking function. It's so crazy. Is I'd be doing the same exact thing if I was single. <laughs> I'd be feeling the same way uh-huh. and going, oh, get this dumb bitch out of here, please. Oh, she started doing a TikTok dance. You got to get her out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't even know what I would do. 
<laughs> Damn. See in your eyes. The disappointment. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. I, that'd be fucking weird. That would suck. To be with a girl that's into TikTok would be fucking real weird. Not that you're, like, you're into TikTok. Just like... <sighs> do you litter? I don't care what you look like. Do you litter? <laughs> you can be really... Pretty as hell, and you just threw your trash out the window. Get out of my car. <laughs> I don't care. We've been together for six months. Six months too long, bitch. Get out of my car. It's just crazy to me. It's like there's little things. I'm like we always say Jerry Seinfeld. Me and Rosie say it all the time. We're Jerry Seinfeld. We just hate. It's just things we hate. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, I, was, I said I said that too because last night I told Rosie this morning I had a dream, a wild nightmare for like my whole dream last night that me and Rosie broke up and it was the worst shit ever. Mm-hmm. But it was like such a realistic ass dream. And I remember I was in the dream and I was looking in the mirror and I was like, what? This is weird. And I was like, I do the podcast tomorrow. Fuck. Mm. And it was realistic because I had to wake up and come do the podcast. Yeah. So it was so real to me. It like worked that into your dream, <sighs> your scheduling. <laughs> oh, it Fuck. was so weird, dude. Did but you feel yeah. relief when you woke up, or was it kind of lingering? Like, no, I'm always oh, the same up. emotion, of, like all pissed off and sad. My dreams are very realistic. It sucks. Wild, wild shit. Oh, speaking of dreams, did we ever? We talked. I wanted to talk about that on the show today. We talked about my dreams on here, or was it just story time? I did the dreams. I don't think we have. Do we talk? We do we fully talk about Rosie's grandpa on here? I, I don't know anything about him. The war shit. We have to have had. We had to have. We might have. No. I'm searching my fucking database here. I got nothing. All right. Or dreams. You know, how Rosie's grandpa was in World War Two, and I had World War Two dreams. And then when he was dying, we talked about all this stuff or no? Uh Okay, well, I don't here have we go. The best memory. I'm it. sorry if you if, if I've talked about it on the podcast before, but I woke up this morning thinking about it. Mm. I was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna talk about that on the show today." There's a lot of story times that I don't think I've ever put on here, and I know a lot of like, well, you tell them story time. I've already seen it. Not everybody has watched my channel. You know why? Because 1.6 million followers on Dope Yolo would be the same on this channel if everyone was a fan of both. Mm-hmm. That's just a fact. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like everybody be watching both. So. The reason I want to talk about it is because I've had very wild dreams my whole life. Very vivid, insane dreams. Um, I think I have the shitting. <laughs> the shining. Oh. Uh, I just, I've had a lot of dreams that I that I see in person. I've had a lot of dreams where I feel like it's just a warning or telling me like, yo, be very cautious. And I have a photographic memory. So with all that combined... I feel like I've dodged a lot of things because of dreams I've had. My grandma Grace has a book, like an old book in Spanish, and tells you what your dreams mean. She's had it my whole life. Um, Whether or not that book's real or is accurate is up to you, interpretation, but every time she's ever looked in it to tell me something, it's been exactly what I feel. Um, She's like, yo, you're having dreams of your teeth falling out. You ever have teams of your teeth crunching and falling out? Or just something about your like your whole te- like your teeth being broken, taken out, falling out, or coming straight out. You all probably had that. And she looked in her book. She's like, "Oh, it means you, you're uncomfortable with somebody that's you're living with, or multiple people. So your your home or like your home brain, your brain of yourself that's home doesn't feel feels vulnerable or blah blah blah." She explained it to me. I went, and that was like the month I moved in with my grandpa after my grandma died. Mm. And I had never lived with him before. Yeah. And I felt like, oh my sitting God, this silence. is so weird. Yes, it was yeah. sitting in silence. Like, uh, what do we talk about now? So, you know what I mean? So, it's very accurate. And uh, my dreams are very accurate. I've had dreams of uh, people I've never seen that I've seen them in person. And I remember them from the dream. I've, 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 I've had a lot of weird, f- I don't know. I don't know what to call it. I have it and it's it's happened my whole life. And this dream I'm about to tell you about is the first reoccurring dream I ever had. And I 
had a conclusion and I've never had the dream since, which is kind of insane. I did a story time on this. I don't know if we've ever talked about it on here, but if we have, I'm sorry. If we haven't, get ready. If you're driving, oh, you're, you're welcome. Next 30 minutes is gone for you. I love stories when people are telling stories and when I'm on the road. I could just space forever and mm-hmm. listen to everything. Or just watching Jersey Shore and listening to Jersey Shore. I got to catch up, man. I got to catch up. <laughs> I'm 12 years late. I just started watching it <laughs> three months ago. I'd never seen it before. So I'm late, I'm late, all right? And all the new shit's coming out on Twitter. Anyway, uh, here we go. I had this dream when I was uh, three, four, maybe, then five, then seven, nine, 12, 15. Then it kind of stopped. And the last time I had it was about 16. A photographic memory, I can see everything. And remember, I'm three or four. I have no recollection. I have no basis to what war is. I don't know these things. And I'm only telling you what I told my mom. So three-year-old, four-year-old, can you can see what that kid was thinking. Then as a nine, ten-year-old, I'm telling you the exact same thing. Nothing changed except now I know those terms and what they are. So as three or four, I remember this story. I remember the first time I told my mom or I was crying. I remember everything about it. So it's not like I was just like, yeah, and then I saw tanks. No, like, I'll tell you, all right? I have this dream when I was a kid. The first time I ever had it, I'm running. I'm running. I have a gun. I'm running. It has a sword on it. No, 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 sorry. I'm running with a gun. That's right. Starts off me running. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. And a bunch of like red dots are going over me. (laughs) Like a bunch of little red things are going over me. I'm ducking. And there's a bunch of spiky wires. I told my mom. Barbed wire. Barbed wire. Mm -hmm. A bunch of spiky, spiky wires. There's a bunch of barbed wire next to me. And there's like these holes. Like canals. Like at my grandma Grace's. There's a bunch of canals and I'm running and I'm running and I'm running and there's buildings next to me like kind of looks like brick buildings and they're like falling over. Some of are crushed. There's planes and I see all this little red like dots going over my head and they're loud and there's so much smoke in the air and the sky's like not blood red like light, very light, light, light red Kool-Aid color. You know what I'm saying? Like right when the dust starts to mix, like oh, it's oh, it's getting red. Still like a little orange, not orange, but like so smoky, and the sky is red, and it looks clouded, but it's red. I don't know how to describe it. Not like shockingly cartoon red, just like realistic red. Still, you know what I mean? I don't know how to explain it. But I'm a kid. I'm. I just know I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. And there's bombs. I hear bombs going off, and then there's a park bench perfect normal park bench not blown up like the park bench like in the mask where he meets her at the park (laughs) just a park bench i run and i dive and slide under it i have my gun i slide under it and i grab the guy with me the guy with me is a blonde kid he's a kid but he's like seven at the time i had this dream i was a kid like three or four probably four He's got, I can't remember what color eyes, like blue or brown. I'm trying to, I feel like it's like it's meddling now. Like I can't remember his color eyes now. I had this dream my whole life. It's crazy. Blonde hair, tight curls. Like tight little curly blonde hair. Almost like a German kid would have, honestly. Okay. Right? Like, yeah. like a little German kid in the 30s. Like oh. little tight curls shaved up here. Just on the top, little tight curls. Blonde, and he's a kid. And I have him down. I'm like, get down, get down. And I and I, we're just doing this. I'm holding my helmet. And I go, choo, 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 choo. and there's bombs going off. And I hear like <laughs> shit crumbling. And the kid's with me. And I'm holding him down. I'm like, stay here. And we're moving. And we're still under the bench. We're like looking. And then I hear some guy yelling at me. I don't understand what the hell he's saying. I couldn't tell you what he was saying, but he's yelling at me yelling and I turn and I have the kid behind me I turn 
I don't like this. And he has a gun and his gun has a sword. That's what I remember telling my mom. His gun had a sword on it. Long, like pieceless metal stick, like a sword coming off his rifle. And I went to shoot him. I'm like four years old. Having this panic of a dream. I go like this to shoot him. And it's a water gun. It's plastic. And it's not even brown like rifle anymore. It's a water gun. And I go like this. And it doesn't work. Like it's plastic. I can now feel it. It was just metal. It was just in my hand. And as I go, stay. And I go to shoot the guy. As I turn around, I'm like, and it's got colors. It's a water gun. Like it's a plastic grayish muted gray kind of white pearl colored water gun with like orange and blue on it. Like a Nerf gun. Doesn't have the orange pump though. You know, that doesn't have that. And I remember looking at him like, and then he just does that. The guy looks at me. He's got a green helmet. Or no, he's got a green outfit or brown, green outfit, green helmet, like a metal soldier. I tell my mom he has a helmet. It's like cut off. It only goes right here. Not a football helmet. It's not a motorcycle helmet. It's not a bike helmet. It's like a, like a cap. I don't know. I don't know. I describe it to my mom, telling her. And as I go, he goes like that. He just goes like that, like almost like, fuck you. Just goes like that. And I just hear, and when I hear, I wake up. This dream's like, if it was a movie, this dream is four and a half minutes. It's not crazy long. We're not like laying in bunkers or anything and waiting. We're not doing anything. It's just, it's pretty fast. But I remember I'm the blonde kid's like almost crying. He's freaking out. I'm like, stay here. I got you. And I'm like, um, guiding him. I'm guiding him. Like, to stay down, stay down. And then I hear that shit, the whole shooting thing. And I wake up fucking crying and tell my mom. I had that dream again, like, two years later. Identical. And it's not like it's different. It's exactly the same. I know exactly what's going to happen. I know exactly what the guy's going to yell at me. I know my gun's plastic. All this shit. Like, I know what's going to happen. I'm watching the movie again, essentially. Same thing. Boom. Nothing happens. And then he goes, every time. And then he does this. And right when he does this, I hear, and then it goes black every single time. Just goes black. And not like I see something hit me. It just goes black. I don't see anything. I just see him go, and I hear, and it goes black. So I had that dream again. I was like 10. I had that dream again. I was like 11. And by this time, I already know. Oh, the war dream. The war dream. I always remember, oh, the war dream. Now that I'm older, you know, 12, four, last time I had it, I was like 16. Last time I had it, I now realize what's going on. Oh, those red things, those are tracers. They're tracer bullets going over my head. I think every 50th bullet is a red one to let you know where you're aiming. So every, every red one, there's 50 in front of that, which is insane to me. <laughs> it's horrible. So those are bullets. Those dips, like at grandma's, are bunkers. The spiky things is barbed wire. Those are the trenches. Those are the trenches. The outfit and the way guys yelling, oh, this is World War II? Probably a German guy yelling at me. I couldn't remember what he was saying. I couldn't understand it, but he's yelling at me. Probably German, I'm assuming, because I can't understand the language whatsoever. As a kid, I just remember he was like barking at me. And every time I had it when I got older, it's not like he says different shit. It's the same same dream over and over and over, like continuously. Every three to four years, I'm having this panic of a dream. Nightmare, I should call it. But I always remember the buildings and where the buildings look and the sky behind it. Vroom, planes going, and there was bombs, and there was hella smoke, and there's the red stuff, red. And the building crushed on my right with a big hole. You can see the second floor of the building, almost like a GT, uh, uh, Call of Duty map. Really describing the way it was kind of like a Call of Duty map, mm -hmm. honestly. So I have the dream, and as I get older, I'm like, oh, that's a bayonet on his gun. You're probably in World War II. If I can have the dream and assess and write these all down, I'm like, well, kid, it sounds like you had a World War II dream. What were you watching? I didn't watch war movies. I was three or four years old. I'm watching Sonic and like, you know, X Men. I don't watch war movies. I don't want, I, I, I I like war movies now, but I couldn't tell you what war movie my mom and dad liked as a kid. There is none. 
And if it was Full Metal Jacket, it definitely they definitely didn't let me watch it past private uh, past the private pile part. My mom would have never let me watch that as a three year old. So as I get older, I'm like, why did I know all? Why did I see the shit that I've never seen? That's what always threw me off when I was like 11, 14, 16, having this dream. Is how was I three or four having dreams about shit that I had never seen before, ever? So that dream stays in my head. I'm down selling packs, doing my thing, you know, doing, you know, blah, blah, blah. Still have insane dreams. I have way more dreams. Maybe we'll do another podcast about it, but. I know this dream by heart. I could tell you. I could put it in a movie and script. I can if somebody could draw it. I can show you what I saw right now. So, I know that dream by the back of my hand. I start dating Rosie. Rosie's mom is adopted, right? Her grandma, Rosie's mom's parents. Well, her grandma, grand, Rosie's mom, grandma, grandpa are pastors. They're both pastors. Rosie's dad, his dad's a pastor. So both sides, grandparents are pastors, right? They have a huge house. They live next door to their own church. Huge house where they get a bunch of kids. Uh, you know those people that actually bring in, like, I raised these children. I did this. I, oh, this kid is now this. Oh, I helped get this person clean. The fairy tale movies is exactly what Rosie's grandma and grandpa did. They weren't sitting there taking checks to help people. They were just helping people, which is insane. I thought Rosie might have been exaggerating. She's not exaggerating at all. It's it was insane the kind of shit they did for Planada. It, the city by Merced is crazy. Anyway, when I met Rosie's grandpa, he was already in a uh, bedridden, like in a wheelchair, and then bedridden. But he's this great big ass, big ass white guy, pastor, very deep voice, right? Very commanding voice, and uh, he has very bad dementia. When I met him. So before going over there, she told me, like, warned me, like, yo, he has very bad dementia. If he doesn't remember, blah, blah, blah. The, every, the whole family, like, prepped me. And I went over there. Completely fine. Guy was normal. Super chill. Remembered everybody in the room. Said everybody's name. Was talking, blah, blah, blah. I left. And then we got in the car. Next time I went to Rosie's mom's house, they're like, well, we don't know what happened. Like, he, he was fine. That was a... Like, what a great opportunity for you to meet him. He's like, oh, you're Rosie's boyfriend. Okay. He's like, my little Rosie has a boy. Like, you know, he's all hyped. That's his grandkid. And we talked. He was chill the whole time. Like, this is the guy that you guys were talking, like, just goes off on random shit. Doesn't remember anybody. Freaks out on you. What? This guy was chill. Went over there again a couple months ago. Same exact thing. Everything was fine. We talked about random shit. Watch TV. That's it. He only watched pastors. That was it, guys. It was very normal old man to me. And everybody's like, we don't understand. Like, that's the second time that's happened. That's crazy. Anyway, um, he has super bad dementia every other time. He just lost all the time, right? So just lost in his head. And Rosie's like so stoked because she's like, oh, you met my grandpa. Like he was chill. Like I didn't think that was ever going to happen. You know what I mean? Because he is, has full-blown dementia. Then he gets uh, a little sick and then he has to stay in his bed more. He, does, he was in World War II. He's a full-blooded German. Full-blooded German but fought for America because he was born here. His dad fought in Germany for World War I. He's a full-blooded German, came over here, was like, no, nah, nah, that's not cool. I'm going to America. Then his son got drafted, which is so terrible, which is insane, right? Like, I left Germany for no more war, came to America, I had to go back to Germany to fight. Send my kid back. Send my child back, blonde child, blonde hair, blue-eyed child, right? So, and this is the craziest part about all of it, right? He does not talk about World War II. He did a whole tour over there. He will not talk about it. I guess he talked to Norma Jean, as, gran as Rosie's grandma, Norma Jean. Uh, the whitest people on earth from the Midwest. They moved over here to be pastors. They're the, they were the coolest. Um, he does not talk about war. You do not talk about war with him. You don't bring it up. Everybody knows that. Like You leave it alone. He, that's in his past. He's not like talking about that. Rosie's never talked to him about that. And at the time, we're 23, 24, 
right? She's never talked to grandpa about it ever. Um, so we go to his bed because he's not in the wheelchair. He's like in bed now. He's, he's like getting worse. Huge guy, the deepest, big, deep, giant voice. Very, very deep. And uh, we go into his room and I was like, kind of like odd. Oh, like, should I go into the, your grandpa's room and sit with you? He's like, is that cool or should I not? And Rosie's like, no, sit with me. I go in. He's fine. Hey, Rosie. Remembers her off the bat. Hey, Thomas. I'm like, oh, shit. He remembers me? Oh, damn. Let's go. And we're sitting there for 30 seconds. It's in the middle of the day. And he goes, hey, you know, you, you remind me of somebody. And I go, really? He goes, I, I didn't know who it was, but now I know who it is. You remind me of somebody. I'm like, awesome that's cool it's like who is it and he goes so i was in germany he's like it's world war ii and rosie kind of looked at me like what the fuck is he gonna talk about germany right now she kind of side-eyed me he goes so i did a tour in germany blah 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 he just starts talking about his rank and what he did and what he did he's like 19 years old blah 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 young kid scared to death and he's like skinnies could be you know doing that old man like describing yourself in different forms, skinny as can be, light as a feather, just a twig. Like he just kept going, like, oh yeah. All right. He's like, there was this young Mexican guy who looked just like you. He's like, he was my friend. He's like, just like he said his name. But I'm not gonna say his name just in case they're like, that's my grandpa. Don't be talking. You know what I mean? It's weird when you talk about war shit. He's like, he looked just like you, and that's why you remind me of him. That's who it is. And he was like coming to it like, that's who you remind me of. Kind of one of those, right? But like very old and deep voice and kind of sick. So he he was kind of sat up. Here's his bed. I'm sitting toward the foot to the left of it. And Rosie's at the head of the bed talking to him, like holding his hand and shit. And she's looking at me like, what the fuck? And he goes, so one time in war, the scariest time in my life. He goes straight into a full story like Light Malcolm in the middle, everything stops. Light goes on him to wreck it. He's just telling a story, looking right at me. And he's talking to me. And I'm just like, oh, wow, your grandpa's talking. Holy shit, he's going to tell me about war? This is crazy. I'm the only person in your family, the newest person in your family. Not even married yet. We've been dating barely like seven months. <laughs> and he's going to tell me this shit. Everybody else is going to be pissed or go, what? How? You know what I mean? I didn't even ask for it. That's what I'm thinking. Like, wow, I wonder if everybody's going to be cool with this. That's what I was thinking. I wasn't thinking anything like, whoa, war. And he goes, so, little Mexican friend. He's like, he's a little brown. Like, the way he was describing, he's like, he's like, he look just like you. Look just like a stocky guy. Um, I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, we look a lot. Yeah, I get it. But he wasn't like being a weirdo. He was just uh. saying like, you look just like you, but he was a stocky guy. Anyway, he starts going into a straight full blown war story, guys. Enough to where he started and went, oh, this is not going to be fun. This is going to be a, this is going to be one of those stories. And he gets in and he's like, <sighs> we get trapped. And he starts going straight into war, war eyes. Like we got locked down and he starts going into full detail, but like, storytelling master that he i guess he was i had no idea that this man was so detailed we're locked down so we're locked down night one we don't get up because there's too many tracers i've seen too many people getting taken out by tracers and i'm not gonna stand up i'm a tall guy that's what he's like i'm a big guy like i'm not i'm not standing up I'm not getting out of this bunker i'm not getting out of the trenches i'm gonna stay in the trench and he said me and my buddy he stuck it out with me. I was scared to death. He stuck it out with me. And he's like, night two. He's like, tracers and bombs still going off. Hearing people scream. He's like, all I do is hope to God that somebody comes by, that we can hop in a vehicle and get out. He said he was basically at D-Day, which is the, was it Nor Norm Norway Beach? Yeah. Beaches in Norway, right? Normandy. Normandy, sorry, Norway. Normandy. American, American, uh, learning teaching right here guys <laughs> here we go i was probably selling drugs during that period anyway here we go he goes, yeah we were locked down he's all day two he's like 
I didn't think we were going to make it. I'm sitting there. I can hear people screaming. My buddy's there. He's like, we're sitting there. We're just going to tough it out. He's like, I can hear bombs going off. There's planes going. I hear screaming. I hear tracers. And I'm not getting up. And I'm like, I'm locked the fuck in. Like, my arms are like, you know when you get that kind of like, ooh, that like slight shake. Like, ooh, I got goosebumps thinking about that shit. And he's like, I don't know what to do. I'm scared. I'm not going to make a run for it. And he goes, day three, morning of. He's describing this like a movie or like 24. Dink, dink, dink with times and shit. Date, germ. Like, it's just crazy as shit, dude. And I'm like, I'm, I'm periodically looking at Rosie, but he's, he's looking at me. So I'm not trying to like be rude. I'm looking back at him, which is kind of odd. He's telling the story into my eyes. I'm like, oh, shit. And then as he starts talking, the more he starts talking, he's like, we're going down the trench. We're, we're trying to move. And he's like, my friend's got me. He's like, don't worry. Come with me. Come with me. We duck down. And the more he's talking, he goes, there's tracers. I can hear explosions. And I go, in my head, I'm like, there's tracers and explosions. You're a blonde kid. What? And I started thinking, this sounds a lot like my fucking dream. I'm 15 minutes into this story. And it just hits me. I'm like, what did you just say? Your homie tells you what? Get down, stay down, come with me. Okay. Continue. I didn't say that to him in my head. I'm like, what the fuck did you just say? He's like, and then what do we hear? And he said something like, uh, he did a, like a comparison to seeing God. I can't remember what he said. It's like, and then I saw the most beautiful thing. He's like, an allied tank. That's what he said. Like, I see one of our tanks and it's coming by us. He's like, he's like oh, we're in the trench. He's basically saying, we're in the trench. There's barbed wire. He's like, they got to get over that. And then there's a tank. He's like, my friend tells me, you stay down. You stay behind me. Come with me. We're hopping on the side of that tank and we're going to get out of here. He's like, we've been there for three days. I haven't been walking my leg, he's, he even said, like, it's freezing. I'm in two feet of mud. It's like, my legs are like this. I was a skinny kid. My legs were like noodles. It's like, I'm not, I was not ready for it. He's a stocky guy. He can, like, the way he was saying, he was like, I was just too small. I was just too weak. Like, the way he's saying, like, I was just too weak to get up. And he's like, so he started dragging me. He saw tanks about 30 yards away, 30 yards away, 15 yards away. And my friend says, go. He grabs me. We get over the barbed wire. And we start sprinting and we're using it as cover. It's like we're using the tank as cover from the turret so he can jump on and hold on to the side of the tank to hope that the tank is leaving so he could live. Right? Like, because you can't keep up with it. You're, you're so dying. You're, you're so tired that you can't even keep up with it. If there's a foot soldiers, they're probably going to shoot you looking at you on the side of the tank. So that your only chance is to hold on <laughs> the side of a tank. So he says, I'm running, but I'm just so tired. He's like, it's only f f eight yards away and I just can't catch up to it. And he's like, my friend's holding me, run and run. He's like, all right, come on, come on. He says his little Mexican homie, he didn't say homie. He's like, my Mexican, my little friend, my friend. He said his name, but my friend, so, and he says his name. He's all, he hops up easy as can be back of that tank holding his body against the side he's like he's right on top where the he's explaining basically where the track is and you know with the thing that twists he's on the side of that he could get sniped at any moment like you could get killed at any moment but he says i see him and i'm falling behind i can hear explosions i hear tracers and he's like i'm that's it he's like i can't i just can't do it i couldn't keep up and he's like, i'm watching my trip home leave he's like i'm watching it go away and he's only like a couple yards away he says but he's like i just can't do it so he's like and then he's sorry i don't keep saying and then and then so his homies on the back of the tank basically hand out like aladdin do you trust me <laughs> that's how i'm imagining it little brown guy and he's like i just couldn't do it so i started slowing down and he's like without a beat he hops off the tank runs behind me and starts pushing me, gets under my arm. We get to the tank. He gets me up, throws me right on the tank. He's like, I'll flop over. 
on the back side of the tank. He's like, I could still get shot, but I'm just, I'm just I'm like, what are you going to do? He's like, I have to do something. He says he reaches out to grab his homie to hop on. He's like, his homie was easily jumping onto the tank. Like, yo, boom, put him on. And then he said, he put him on, reached his hand out. He's like, and that's when I saw my friend blow into pieces. He's all mortar hit right behind him. Blew him to pieces all over me. And he's like, then I went home. And that's how he ended the story. Jesus Christ. <laughs> look just like you. <laughs> and he's like, you look just like you. You look just, just like him. And I'm like in my head, like, what am I always gonna die in these dreams? <laughs> no, because that's another dream I, I cried to my dad about when I was like six. We were truck driving. I woke up freaking out that there wasn't like I had other war dreams, and he uh, same thing. I just explained to him like so I've had dreams about explosions and this and war, but that's the one that was always reoccurring. It's word for word, step for step. You look just like him. And I, it didn't fully hit me until I left and started thinking about every word he said. Like, what? I always have this dream. And since I was a kid, I always have a dream I get shot in the face. Since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. That's why I was always so nervous about getting shot. Said, I told you about them. Like, oh, I always thought I was going to get shot by some gangbang when I was a kid. And then that fool tried to shoot me in the head. Mm -hmm. But like, I, obviously it was not nearly severe. But yeah, he said that shit to me. We talked about nothing for like a couple more minutes. And then he was like, oh, I'm tired. So we left. And then we we're in the car. I'm telling Rose, like, and she doesn't get it yet either. I'm like, Rosie, my dream. She's like, what are you talking about? My, my war dream. It's like the curly headed kid. And the thing is, there's a picture of him standing in his, uh, his outfit. With the kid? No, all young. Oh. With another guy. Little curls, <sighs> little blonde little only top curls uh -huh. shaved up just like the little kid. I mean, so, damn near the same fucking haircut. So what do you man. take from all this? Not even done. Okay. So I think Rosie has wild dreams too, but they're more on like a spiritual shit. I'm, I'm, I'm more of like, yo, be careful. Make sure you warn this person. Make sure you chill. Keep yourself. I'm like a spidey sense. Rosie's more like a message type of shit. Gotcha. It's push tree's house we know he's super sick we go to the hospital he's in one of the big rooms so you know like oh there's operating like oh so he's he, i mean he's like in the big ass room with doctors not just like a room where you lay and get better almost like an operating room gotcha we go in this big fucking man on the table hi rosie blah, 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 blah. looks like you take care of her i'm like yeah man of course you know just trying to be like the Yo, you're sick type of thing, right? And we visit with him. Rosie's sad as fuck. She's obviously going through it. We're walking out. Rosie's in front of me. And I don't know why I look back right through one little slit of a window. I look back and he's looking right at me. He does that. And he just does that one to me. And I went and I let, and I walk and I walk, kept walking. I stopped and I went. And I just kept I kind of like a just to be polite. But the yeah. way he looked at me like, you all right? I kept walking. Went to bed. Um, Rosie woke up freaking out because she had a dream that her grandpa, no, no, woke up to a phone call. And Rosie was already freaking out because she said she was having a nightmare. Woke up to a phone call. I already knew exactly what happened by the look on Rosie's face. It was pitch black. I could see it. Rosie to a phone call from her mom that her grandpa died, right? couple hours after we left which is like he died in the couple hours after we left rosie started freaking out because she when she woke up she was already like stressed out she was having a dream that she was talking to her grandpa because he said he had just passed away and he's gonna leave he's like i just want to talk to you before i leave blah blah, blah. he's talking about all this advice shit that's i was her to him like he would always give her advice do like the real abc family shit but like mm -hmm. real life stuff mm -hmm. and he would and she's like i was having a dream he was telling me he just passed away and he's going to leave right now, but he's always going to be watching me while this shit. And then like, she got woken up by that call and it was the craziest shit. Mm -hmm. All of that shit happened just like this. Yeah. Back to back to back to back to back. It was nuts, dude. It was crazy. Um, 
But yeah, that's a wild dream that concluded at the end. I've never had that dream. Oof. But then again, I didn't have that dream from 16 to 22 when I met Rosie either. But mm-hmm. like, I never had that dream again. But yeah, dude, that was some shit. And the thing is, when I saw the picture of him in his uniform, I'm like, what the fuck? He didn't look like the kid. Mm-hmm. But he had the resemblance. Yeah. You know, resemb- like the eyes, the little, the hair, the skinny little noodle kid. I'm telling you, dude, like I, I, can, I can tell you exactly what that little boy looked like. He was like mm-hmm. seven years old. He was a cam size, mm-hmm. but I was little. Like I was my age. Yeah. But every time I had the dream, even when I was 15, I was still a little kid. Which the is, kid never got older. It's so strange. Yeah, the kid me. never got older. And the guy that shot me was a full grown man. Mm-hmm. I never understood it. It was like the most vulnerable dream ever. Oh, you're a kid and your gun don't work. <laughs> Fuck you. I think yeah. that's what that dream is like the most vulnerable you could be. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I can't get more vulnerable than that, dude. <laughs> But yeah, describing it like, mom, you're not your child. Question your child. Like, why do you know what tracers look like? <sighs> Those are called trenches, Thomas. Why do you know about trenches? Yeah. Like, I would have asked my child. Like, what the what? Would you just say? Why do you know that? It look like this? Yes. That's D-Day, Thomas. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? And it, what, what I imagined was not D-Day. There was no beach. What I saw was not D-Day at all. Because there was no beach. There was no huge mountain with turrets. It was just like open. When you see those pictures of yeah. land, mm-hmm. open scorched mass, earth. scorched earth land with barbed wire, barbed wire, barbed wire, barbed wire, barbed wire, full stuck in it. Bunch of Ugh. crazy shit, dude. Oh. Like, uh, 1917? Just like that. Yeah. Just like that. Except more people up top than in the trenches. Because when I was in that trench, in or when I was a... Uh, Running and shit, I didn't saw nobody in there. I just saw the dips, like a grandma's, mm-hmm. the little canals. But that, I didn't see nothing else. Yeah. I'm very, I'm very specific. I can't like tell you, like, no, actually, I didn't see that. No, nobody. I saw nobody else on our side, mm-hmm. dressed like my the kid yeah. that I was with. But the kid I was with was dressed a lot like the guy that shot me, except he didn't have a helmet. But the but the guy did. Mm-hmm. I couldn't tell you if I had a helmet. I didn't touch my head, but I just remember with like my little gun. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Weird shit, dude. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there that talk about like past life shit with kids and Ooh. stuff like that. I don't know. But it's weird that it's stuck with you your whole life and kind of resonated with you. Yeah, and the fact that it kind of like made me think like we met before, oh man. Something happened. Something happened. Yeah. Like stuck out for a reason. Like, yo, I hope you marry my granddaughter one day. As you just die. Like, I hope your soul goes and you marry my granddaughter one day. Or or fuck something, dude. It's crazy shit, man. But yeah, pretty wild. Wild stuff. Yeah. Dreams. Crazy ass fucking story. Fleetwood Mac dreams. Um. Yeah, wild, wild shit. Um, sorry, I got stuck. Every time I talk about that story, I get so stuck on it. And I start thinking about it all again. But yeah, no, dude, I've had wild, 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 wild fucking dreams that have. And I'll save, I'll save that. I have other ones that are just. I don't know. I have one that could be so current. I don't even want to say it on here. I'll tell you after. But I have a very, very, very odd. I th- wait, I have talked about it. I have the reoccurring dream that I remember said at my grandma's property. I'm looking out toward where said, and there's a bunch of spaceships shooting at planes and spaceships shooting red laser things into the ground and catching on fire. Mm. And then some of the ships going <laughs> get staticky and they're just drones. Mm. I've had that dream a lot. Same exact dream in the same exact position at my grandma's. When did that start? 2010. Before, right before I met Rosie. Very odd. I've never had a recurring dream. Oh man, I have. I've had many dreams. Like I had a dream where uh, I saw the world ending and I was in San Francisco with my friend. I couldn't see which friend it was and I had another friend with me, which was Ryan. And there was a manhole cover. I was trying to lift it up because I saw like a bunch of fire coming at us. I was trying to get in the manhole cover. And I saw a bunch of people running around where they look like zombies, like trying to attack other people. And I heard like a speaker from the skies going, 
you have messed up too much and we have to restart this one. I'm very sorry, guys. And I was like, what? And then I was just running. There was a bunch of fire and a bunch of people trying to like attack people and like looting and the ground was cracking. And then I just remember it was San Francisco and it was New Year's Eve. That's all I remember because I was like, yes, yeah, New Year's, let's go to San Francisco. And we're on top of a car trying to fight off these people when my dream ended. And then the next day, this is like 2009, the next day, Ralph, my cousin that's with me right now, the next day when I'm in Merced, he lives in Santa Cruz, goes, hey, next week for New Year's Eve, do you want to go to San Francisco with me? They're doing it. It was for a, like a band and an event. And I go, what did you just say to me? He goes, there's an event in San Francisco on New Year's Eve next week. And I go, Ralph, I'm going to tell you right now, I just had a dream about San Francisco and the world ending on New Year's Eve. And I think I'm going to pass. And he went, got to be honest, bro. I totally get it. <laughs> if I had the dream last night, I wouldn't be doing that either. I had that dream. I'm not saying anything happened, but it definitely made me go, nah, I'm good. Because what happens when it starts happening? I'm going to go, all you had to do was listen to your instincts, stupid. I have a lot of dumb dreams, guys. A lot of dumb, weird dreams. But there's only been a few times where they actually saved my ass. Twice where they saved my ass. And we'll get into those in another day. Because I think uh, this will turn into six hours. For real. It'll turn into too long. And as we do the side camera, Marty's totally not changing the battery. He's just break dancing. You hear that? Shh. <laughs> That was the rope. He was doing the robot power down. <sighs> um, damn. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that's what, that's what we had to talk about today. I uh, don't remember anything else of going on with Earth. Uh, I threw my back out, and oh, that's what I'll talk about. I threw my back out. As I told you, I was working out with the trainer and went do a full lunge, bro. I bet you could do full lunges on that leg, and I did. And I heard something go. <laughs> I've just been hurt ever since. So. What I did was I laid down from Saturday night to Wednesday morning. I laid down either on my bed with a heating pad or floating in my bathtub for four hour sessions in the bathtub, which was crazy. But you know what I did do? I used YouTube. Remember how I always say, I don't use YouTube, bro. I just watch fight clips and stupid people getting hurt. I used YouTube. Uh, actually, I want to say the guy's name because I think he does that good of a job that we really need. To, I need to say his name. Let me make sure. Let me make sure. His name. How do you go subscriptions? There, subscriptions. That's not good. Come on, Marty. What's his name? Or did I follow him on the wrong channel? No, I had to have. Um, he does podcast. There it is. Comedy enforcement. This guy. You seen this guy? Oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen him before. Great job. Mm -hmm. Comedy enforcement. Oh, he does such a good job. And also, he made so many videos before he hit 20K. I watched 900 videos in a row. He goes, guys, we're just about to hit 20K. I was like, damn, yeah. fool, how many videos do you do? Mm -hmm. But each time he was gaining followers. Yeah. But it was just so wild because I watched him so consecutively in one night. Oh, yeah. That I'm like. Please let him him. You have him at 20K already. Yeah. This is too good content for him not to have 20. What? Uh -huh. I was just kind of shocked. Like, you've said 20K 10 times in a row. People really aren't following. But this is great content. Anyway, mm -hmm. I did not know about podcast beef. Marty knew because Marty's into podcasting before he met me, obviously, and actively knows. <coughs> Sorry, one second. <coughs> I had no idea. <coughs> Ready? <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Adam 22 and AD. Mm -hmm. We had AD on our show two weeks ago. <coughs> Sorry. <sighs> I know he used to be a no jumper. I know he left no jumper. Let's clip this, Marty. I do podcasting. I do YouTube. I live in Los Angeles and I knew none of the stuff. I'm in all the same field and knew nothing. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Damn, I got dry his throat. 
What I mean by that, guys. Ready? Here's your clips, Marty. AD, Adam22. Uh, I knew they don't like each other. I knew he used to be on No Jumper. No idea why they left. I didn't watch any of the stuff. I just continued with my life. Right? Never watched it. I didn't take the time to sit. As I said, I don't use YouTube right. I don't watch other podcasts. I don't watch other YouTubers. I just exist on YouTube and I watch stupid clips of fights and street beefs. So, I didn't know why Adam22 and AD don't like each other. No idea. Had AD on the channel, or on the show. Booked him a week out. Yeah. The night before. 12 hours before he comes on our show. He apparently goes on a live and goes at Adam22. Nine minutes before we start, Marty goes, you see that shit last night? I go, what? He goes, I guess AD went on live. He really went hard. Go, For real? Right before he comes on. It looks like we're trying to initiate and start beef with everybody. It's not a big deal. Could happen to anybody. Right? Could happen. Didn't know. We had Milk74 on the show. Act did not know he was actively beefing with Adam22. Remember that? Uh -huh. Remember right like, well, 30 minutes before he got here? We're looking at shit like, oh, him and Adam22 don't like each other? He goes, they do not like each other at all. I go, I don't want to talk about beef. I don't care enough. I hope we don't want to talk about that. And we didn't. Mm -hmm. But if I'm over there at No Jump, like, hey, this Dope as Usual show is really likes to interview people that we're beefing with as we're beefing with them. Like, I promise you, it's not that. <laughs> so what I'm saying is AD was on the show, threw my back out that Sunday. <laughs> oh, what did Jesus. I do? I sat there and I, a clip <laughs> came up and it said AD and I went, oh, community, fake community. I need to watch more of it. I just had him on the show. Mm -hmm. Let me just dip my toe into it. The first thing was like, goes off and Antoine went, oh, my, you know, my back hurts. I'm not filming. Mm -hmm. I pressed play. Never do that on YouTube shit. <laughs> I just watch stupid random stuff. <sighs> Ten minutes into the video, I go, nope. I have to figure it out. I have to know what happened. So I found another channel that breaks it all down. <laughs> and it goes, so this is what's going on. I go, perfect. Go. And it breaks down the beef. And I'm like, oh, okay. So you guys are just mad at each other. All right, I get it. All right, I understand. You're not friends no more. I had no idea why they were mad, who was mad at who, and for what, no reason. Mm -hmm. I don't really understand all the details. But, but had him on the show? Yeah. And still didn't know until that weekend. I went, I really should start <laughs> figuring out who does what in what field, who is what. The other day on live, my friend's like, bought me something, something. I'm like, I don't know who that is. He's like, you're a fucking hater. I go, I'm sorry. Who is it? She's a podcast chick. She interviewed Drake. I go, oh, the white chick that was rude to everybody. She just seems like she's like trying to get everybody on their toes. Kind of like a mm. between uh, two ferns. Is that Zach Galvanakis? Mm. Between two ferns? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of feels like that. Like you're trying to catch them off their toes. I'm like, oh, I've never, I don't watch her shit. And I'm like, oh, I kind of sound like a hater. Who's yeah. that? Yeah. I kind of did. But I genuinely went, yeah. who is that? Mm. I don't know, motherfucker. <laughs> Sorry. I should probably start learning more things about stuff. So, with that being said, comedy enforcement. Oh, I took a fucking high dive <laughs> into this shit. I found out about the, all the tiger belly stuff. Oh, yeah. All I can't him, get wrapped up in drama. Him yeah. and his wife split. Yep. Kalila. Kalila. I'm in no position to talk about any of these people. Yeah, I, I can say whatever the fuck I want. I don't think I don't really like her. Okay. I think she's kind of manipulative and not very nice. But actually seems like a nice person. Is that fucked up? I mean, not after what we talked about your aunt. You know, like you no, 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 no. Because all the <laughs> clips I'm watching, I'm like, I watched all those and then I'm like, oh, they broke up. Mm -hmm. I don't know any of these things. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, they broke up. Oh, wow. And then all this stuff's coming. I'm like, you guys don't seem like you you should be together. Oh, they're broken up. <laughs> oh, it makes sense now. But I was like, well, I guess you're together for so long. That's kind of sad. I'd be sad if I was Bobby. Like, even if I don't want to be with you. 
we're still fucking homies. This is weird. But they still do the show together. Yeah, and they still do the show together. Yeah. But as I was watching everything, the comedy enforcement, everybody breaks it down. I guess it's like an ongoing thing. More people think of this stuff. Reddit? I should hop on Reddit. Apparently, that's where all this stuff sparked. Mm. Yeah. Reddit is just a bunch of blue links to me, and they're very confusing. It looks like a page when you click it, it goes URL 407. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it looks like, dude. Or when yeah, like yeah. your computer used to start in 1996 and it flood, a bunch of code. Uh -huh. That's what Reddit looks like to me. It's so hard to figure out. I should get on it because the guy, Reddit thread started this talking about yeah. the Bobby Lee stuff. I didn't know the breaking up. I didn't know that he was doing whatever he was and she was, whatever they were doing to each other, I had no idea. I still like Bobby Lee. He's awesome. I didn't know about that beef. I didn't know about the Bread and Shaw, Brian Callen, uh, 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 Reddit conspiracy thing. Uh -huh. I didn't I didn't know what Shabisms were. Uh -huh. I didn't know Bread and Shaw is so hated. Yeah. I didn't know, I didn't, I've, I've heard some of it. Yeah. You know, we've talked about some of yeah, it together. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, damn, people are just really going hard on him, huh? Now, it goes a lot deeper than that, Tom. It's like, there's a lot, there's a whole thing about it. I'm like, really? Yeah. Now I know? Yeah. Reddit kind of polices YouTube in a lot of ways. Whoa. Yeah. So this is what I'll say. Uh -huh. I, everybody's real mean to him. I'd feel so bad if I was him. Everybody's so mean to that man. Oh, my God. Whether, I don't care. Like we said earlier, she did this, she did that. I still feel bad. She, her leg's broken and all her kids are walking around her. That's what it is. Like with the Brendan Shaw thing, like, yo, just don't listen to his stuff then. You guys are really making fun of the guy. But also, like, I don't, I have no say. I have one week of knowing the knowledge. Mm -hmm. I have one week. I wasn't there for all the, like, and once again, he proves himself to be a jerk. And once again, he proves himself to be like, wow. Damn, you guys really watch podcasts. Yeah. I did not know all of that. I didn't know Brian Callen, Brendan, uh, Bobby Lee aren't friends anymore. Yeah, I didn't, that was a big one. I didn't know about uh, Burt Kreischer. Uh, I did. Uh, th there was a bunch of stuff about that. Uh, Andrew Schultz um, with Whitney Cummings on the show. It's like the most awkward stuff in podcasting. I don't. It started watch with podcasts. Brendan and it overflowed so much from Brendan and it started to spill out onto the other comedians, basically. Yeah. Whoa, and now you actually so asked me trauma. if I was the mastermind behind this the other day. <laughs> the other day, guys, I genuinely, Marty was sitting there after I watched all I this stuff what about, you were gonna about say. Reddit. I'm like, I need you to tell me. Be honest. It's okay. Just be honest. It would have made sense. I'm like, not at all. Are though. you the one behind the fighter and the kid, Reddit? <laughs> because Marty started with them with the whole show. See, episode one. Yeah. Worked with them behind the scenes, did everything, all their stuff. And then we won't say, but like, you weren't let go of the coolest fashion. It was time to move it on. Was, oh, it was hard. <laughs> it's like this like, yeah. damn, dude, this sandwich. Damn, dude, I'm so full of the sandwich. I just want to throw it away. Hey, I'm going to take that sandwich from you. I didn't want it anyway, but I don't want you to be the one that takes my sandwich. I want to throw away this shit if I want to throw it away. Don't fire me. I'll quit. Damn, I almost threw that monster that bitch off. But the way, anyway, the way you, you're like, you yeah, know, it was yeah. time to go away from the show and do our own thing. Yeah, I get that. But it's more like, I don't think we ever talk about it. It's more like, yo, I know you've been working in there for a long time. I hope this text is sufficient. Yeah, yeah. Some shit like, like that. Well, that's Don't text. Let me go. Mm-hmm. Call me, you motherfucker. Well, yeah, no, but that I get it, but it's, but I, I'm not saying like we have beef and uh, not at all. Fucking Brian was on here. He's, I think that was hilarious. Yeah. What I'm saying is, I didn't know that people didn't like that man mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. There's a bunch well, of other comedians like uh, Carlson and C and Rogan mm -hmm. shit. I am very late. I am talking about a 15 year old thing. <laughs> I knew yeah. that Carlsman C was a joke thief. I, I knew that. Uh -huh. I knew that Rogan called him out on stage. I get that. Yeah. I've seen that clip on YouTube before. Mm -hmm. I had no idea who it was about, what is about. I didn't know Ari Shafir beat the dog shit out of Bobby Lee multiple times. I didn't know any oh, of I these things. I didn't know 
anything. I didn't know Bobby Lee was on camera. Yeah, Ned, yeah, he steals. And that's what kind of sealed the deal mm -hmm. for Carlos Mencia. I didn't know any of this. I didn't you know more shit than I knew about <laughs> Yeah, but I didn't know about podcast beef, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I promise you we won't have that here, okay? Yeah, nah. But I just go home, same, don't care, mm -hmm. don't care enough at all. But you know what? Because you know what the problem was? How this all started? In my opinion, it was about being out of touch with the fans. In the sense that, Ooh. because like when I, on, on the sense of like on Brendan's part. Oh, in sorry, sense, I know who you're talking about. Something yeah, about really. like that's how it started. Because in the same, when I met you and I'm like, you answer thousands of comments? Hmm. That's a vastly different approach than all of my other clients have with their comments. I get it. I remember thinking that right it. away because they had the attitude of like, fucking losers are in the fucking comments. Who the fuck comments? You gotta be a fuck. But it's like, these are the fans. And that, to me, is what started the negative turn. Because, and then from there, it became just like a self-awareness kind of thing where they were like, Waiting for them to be like, no, we matter. We're the fans. That's where the turn happened. Oh, see, everyone that in that and that DM, that Twitter or that Reddit, watched this unfold, and in then their opinions time. change in real time. So I'm coming here after the fact, going, "You guys are being real mean to this guy," but I don't know. Like that's what I said. But yeah. I've only had this information for a week. Whew. Only had it for a week. When I was, when we first started those first couple of years, it was very similar to you, your relationship with the fans yeah. in that like it was very dialed in. It was very organic and growing and just super positive and awesome. You know, like it was awesome. Like it was really cool to watch. They were like innovating in a lot of ways and like going on tour and, you know, with the rise of the UFC and shit. Yeah. But I, they just, uh, I think, yeah, it's it's that the crux of what I just mentioned was just like something as simple as the comments or just like the self-awareness around the relationship and the dialogue and the authenticity with the fans, how important that is, how vital it is. You know, there was a lot that I learned watching a lot of the people that I came up working for, what they did right, what they did wrong, that obviously you want to learn from and avoid or do. I got to be honest. While I was watching these, there's a documentary on this guy. Oh, there's that a, was a, a, multiple fucking documentaries. Oh man, that was like wow, dude. That's sad. People really don't like you. That's not. No matter what, Mister Burns still goes to bed like, damn, people really don't like me. I, I still feel bad. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, you yeah. still gotta feel bad for the guy. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, that's sad. Just for me, I do. No matter what, who it is. Like I said, and that's why I was still level, friends yeah. with my mom. When yeah, I was like, exactly. I don't fuck with you. Mm -hmm. I still feel bad for you, though, because if people don't fuck with you, that's sad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's a sad fact. To, Damn, no one likes me. Like, that's not cool, dude. That's not cool. So, um, even in Grandma's Boy, JP the robot still had feelings. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though he was being a jerk to people, still has feelings and shit. And that's sad. Uh, like I said, I always think of people as the kid version of themselves. You don't want to be mean to the kid. Just leave him out. It's sad. Um, anyway, holy shit. I had no idea. I watched a lot of podcast beef. Also, I watched a clip of Andrew Schultz, the flagrant. Apparently, Burt Kreischer is afraid of balloons and clowns. I watched a clip where they bring a clown and a balloon. The second... You, that they bring him out, you see Burt Kreischer's face change to a face you've never seen. A little more self awareness on the part of that show. You should have cut the clown four seconds in. The much. second you saw his face go from Burt Kreischer to, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> nah, I would have stopped it immediately. He, they think he, he has an like actual. Joking? I think so, but I could see on his face like, oh no 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 no, that's a that's a. That's a kid mechanism, like a, mm -hmm. like that was like true fear. That was fear. Like that wasn't cool. You could tell the look on his face. He looked like that shit was. Sad. This is no longer like not a fun, fun thing. Yeah. Not fun. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm only talking about the podcast stuff I watched, but yes, I watched it. What a sick uh, YouTube channel. To, they break down every single thing you could think of. I had no idea about any of it. Um, I need to watch more shows. Um, I don't know anybody. <laughs> well, now you know. No, I know him. It only took almost becoming paralyzed for a week to <laughs> tap him. Well, no, I couldn't work. Yeah, I couldn't just, do anything. So I was it like, was weird. Uh, like, I was just you stuck. were first time since I've known you. Where yeah. you were done out of commission. Done. But I was laying in the bathtub with my with my uh, laptop on the wood thing, mm -hmm. watching this fool, just letting it play, not even clicking it because I'm like, oh my back, just let it play. Yeah. And it was plugged in. Oh man, come on. Yeah, people. Nice. There's people that just have kind of dedicated their channels to like reviewing podcasts, mm -hmm. people's activities and shit. Yeah, I just, I just look around and see some of the biggest shows, and I'm like, hey man, we can be there. We can do that. We gotta let like, YouTube let us up, let up on us. But also, I get it. You don't hear bad friends Tiger Belly and or bad friends Bobby Lee and Andrew Santino talking about meth heads every episode. <laughs> Sorry. And they're not saying hard, hard cuss words. Like, this name might cuss, but we're like, you can feel it. Like, if you have headphones on, you'll hear, fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah, I kind of hurt my ears. <laughs> kind of like pop the air into my ears. Turn my headphones up. Turn them shits up. Turn them shits up. All right. Guys, we've been here for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't even feel like it, Marty. And you know what's crazy? My back is not doing this. Ah, that's what's it's working. I have 29 more sessions on that machine Oof. for them to fully take my disc out and pop them back into place. Wow. I slightly fell asleep in the MRI machine. Oh, shit. Yeah. It's not easy to do, I don't think. Right? Dude, I'm not claustrophobic at all. Oh. <laughs> I'm the opposite <laughs> of claustrophobic, dude. If I sleep and Rosie's not with me, like when I slept in Vegas at my friend's bachelor party, I could I the I looked like a monster sleeping. I tucked the blankets under my feet, around my legs like a coffin, like a sarcophagus, like yeah. like a mummy. I wrap it completely flat. You can see the whole curve of my entire body. Uh -huh. I wrap it under my arms, under my head, and then I kind of stretch it out. Oh my god! And I kind of stretch it out, and there's like that tightness above me, <laughs> and it looks like a coffin. <laughs> I look like a mummy when I I do it because. I don't know why, like pressing that and the tension that it holds my oh. head, and it's kind of like I'm in a hammock. I okay. I don't wake up like that. I'm obviously all yeah. moved, but like that's how I fall asleep. I sleep on the complete edge of the bed. I sleep on the on my side on the edge of the bed with the fan directly blasting at me. <laughs> <laughs> the same shit every time. Stop. I could have a single size bed. I wouldn't know the difference. I don't move. That's it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. That's cool. There's other people out there doing that shit. Let me know. I sleep on the edge of the bed as if I grew up with nine <laughs> brothers. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, single child over here. Squished to the edge of the bed. It's, it's all about that fucking fan. I wake up, I go hit the office first thing, fan goes back on. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I sleep as, as if I'm a mummy. That's crazy shit. It's fun. If you I can hotbox it too, by the way. Sleep. Because look, no, because you have the blanket and you have your feet holding it. So there's like a yeah. space this high. I am on my phone under there if I want to be. Oh, okay. You're in a tent. It's like a tent. A fort. A fort, yeah. but only around my... I can look down and see my my foot, my body. The blanket's t so tight around okay. me. And then you could do this too with your elbows because it's so tight. Kind of like whoop, 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 okay. like a tent, yeah. All right. I was falling asleep, a pod, falling All right. asleep. Okay. Shit. like a pod. <laughs> Fall asleep in that bitch. <laughs> Meth. All right, here we go, <laughs> guys. That's it. We. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. Oh, uh, for the first time in a long time, we have three ads in this episode. Fuck yeah! Thank you, guys. Shout out to Best Raw ever this month for sponsoring the show from here on out. Thank you very much, Raw. In this episode, we also have Freeze Pipes. Thank you for Freeze Pipe, the first sponsored video I ever did on Dope Azula channel ever. Yeah, let's go. First Thank video I ever pipe. did that had an intro, mm -hmm. had a logo coming in, and sound. That's crazy. Never done any of that before. Um, and motherfucking Manscaped. Yeah, and then we have Manscaped, our longest sponsor ever. 
Thank you very much. We have a lot of big sponsors starting in September. All right. And then after this, next week is, is Fluffy. Right? We got, yeah, after the, the we got one more episode after this comes out in between the Fluffy episode. Two weeks out, another way of saying Let's go show. two weeks to Fluffy, guys. I'm excited. I really, 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 really hope I get that man extremely high. That's a given. That's happening. He could not smoke and he's going to get extremely high. Yeah, <laughs> but he's fluffy. We should have big joints. Yeah, yeah. Cigar style joints. Agreed. All right, good shit, guys. Thank you so much for being here, Marty. Is there anything else you want to add? Just appreciate you guys across the board. Thanks for supporting all the channels, everything, guys. Thanks for all the nice messages, the nice comments, supporting the sponsors, watching the clips channel, following on all the pages. You guys are the shit. We're gonna keep it motherfucking pushing. Yeah, I like that. We need tech decks too, by the way. Yeah, we do need some tech decks. For everybody driving, I've been, uh, I just hit a solid kickflip. Um, guys, thank you so much for being here. Uh, this has been the Dope as Usual podcast. We, we talked about a bunch of wild shit today. Deceit, deception, betrayal. Deceit, deception, betrayal. Shut up. Shut up. Break, go break your leg. Shit was insane. That shit was pretty wild, actually. Yeah. Party did not stop a beat. That's the craziest part about all of it. Um, yeah. All right, guys. I don't know how we got this far. I feel like this thing is wrong. I don't fucking know. Three hours we just That's did? Insane. My back doesn't even hurt? This is insane. I love starting in the morning. Look how time Let's it is. Let's go watch this UFC, then watch these motherfucking bills, and power edit this thing. Yeah, yeah. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Uh, shout out to all of our sponsors. Shout out to you also. Thank you so much for being here. The Dope, dope as usual podcast.com. Dope as usual podcast.com. You can get our merch there. You can get every single piece of information. You get our write ups. We look, we look super professional. You can see the TED Talk stuff there. You can see every sponsor we've ever worked with. And if any sponsors are out there, there is a link in there for every single question you can think of sponsorships and a form you can fill out if you want to be a sponsor. There's no back and forth. You tell us exactly what you want, exact every single thing. I know this one dude that made the site and he went hard on it. And it's this guy. <laughs> This is fucking music to my ears. You got the business side of this thing. This new site that we have just really makes life a lot easier. So much better. So much better. Oh, and since, you know, this, our, our, our channel's not, you know, getting very recommended right now, Dope as Usual Podcast Clips. On YouTube, please go subscribe. Even if you're not going to watch them, go like all the videos. That would really help us out. Like we said, we got a little swindled a little bit. So we need a couple thousand more watch time hours on clips that would really help us that's out crazy he's like yo i need to fill up this bucket well here's a dropper <laughs> like, fuck you man yeah. but if we have 1500 homies yeah. with droppers yeah. named you watching that would help perfect all right mighty that's it Thank nice shirt i agree I'm one on. of my favorite shirts it's Let's basically go. the giving tree but it's hug trees with the little bong in the i love the little bong and the signature is michelle silverstein I'm oh, sorry, Shell Silverstein. <laughs> it's supposed to be mimicking uh -huh. here. Love it. And that's either Marty or Caillou. This one's Caillou. That one's Caillou. Yeah. Yep. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate you. From Marty and I, this has been the Dope's Usual Podcast. Have a dope ass day. Oh my God. I can't believe that was three hours. Yeah, three hour fucking session. Oh, yeah. Three oh, hours. Good shit. Perfect. Perfect.